Great one. Welcome to another episode of Animation. Third of the squad is back. Yo. Myself. Wait, a third? Three fourths. Three quarters? Three fourths. Three fourths. Let's work on our fractions. Three quarters. <laughs> this, is not, <laughs> something. this is not the math fractions podcast. Fractions destroyed me when they came into my life. So <laughs> there it is. The remnants of that explosion is happening. My brother would be like, see, math is life. See, that's why you're not an engineer <laughs> near like I am. With but you're the one who came out with the degrees. numbers, though. You I know. To- <laughs> and I said it with confidence, too. So much. <laughs> you played yourself. You played yourself. You played yourself, Keenan. Brennan's back. What up? Uh, back. Hey. So, no ice. No ice. No uh, ice. You know one one thing that I think we should start saying? What? So first, can you describe what we are and who we are? Because I want to add something to the end of it as well. We are a dope anime podcast. We review anime. And we do one-off topics, man. It's what we do at the Animation Podcast. And the way that we recommend watching or listening to this podcast is that you watch the four episodes that we are talking about first and, yes. then, watch, and then listen to this afterwards mm-hmm. um, so that you can be right in the seat where we are while we do this. Yes. That, yeah, we always watch our episodes by four. Unless we're doing like a last, this ten is actually by six. Um, the last except six. today, every yeah, day except, except today. today. <laughs> yeah, normally we, we we finish off the lag the last six or last, like last five if it's like a twenty five you know uh, uh season uh, uh twenty five episode season or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's right. We want you guys to watch it first and then listen to the podcast yeah. so you can get our. Because some, some of these animes we haven't watched before. I know some of y'all have watched them, but some of y'all haven't watched them in like in 15 years. So re-watch some shits. So don't get mad when y'all be like, oh, Cowboy Bebop, it's a classic. And we're shitting on it, but you saw it like 15, almost 20 years ago. Or in any other uh, old nostalgic yeah, one. Asterisk, we have not shit on uh, Cowboy Bebop yet. One of, had our has. Moments. one of us has. Yeah, one of us has. But we had our moments. About, <laughs> not just Cowboy Bebop in general, just yeah, yeah. animes in general. That yeah, might Samurai be Shampoo. Yeah, we kind of dogged that out. We I did. didn't. I did not. <laughs> Brennan did not. And uh, I know people like did. But my thing is when we do that stuff, make sure you rewatch what you call a classic. Okay? They get reckless in that group chat. And I'm like, did you even watch this? And they're no. like, nah, not since I was younger. Exactly. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched it since you were 13 years old, I don't give a fuck about that. You have to rewatch and tell me what you feel because if it holds up to now in your in your late twenties or if you're in your thirty or however old you are and it still holds up to your old standards, hey, whoa, all right, man. Hey. I think our rules should be like if you haven't seen it in the last two years, you don't count. Two years? Mm. I'll give it two years. Two years for me is like a good timeline for like seeing some anime. Nah, if, I, nah. if I watched for example, I watched every single episode of Bleach, all of them. Three hundred and seventy-one mm-hmm. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you're not gonna watch all three hundred again. No, like, I watched them too. more than two years ago. So sure. like now, if you're like, "Yo, let me tell you about this specific character arc," I'm just gonna be like, "Right." Yeah. So I kind of watched all that in one summer. <laughs> you know I what I'm wouldn't. Saying? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend something like that long to go back and rewatch two or three times. But I mean, I feel like stuff like that you can kind of pick through and watch certain episodes and be like, "All right, this is still good. I I can watch these particular episodes and they're good." Yeah. Um. So yeah, man. Uh, Cowboy Bebop. We're gonna finish up episodes twenty one through twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. 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 Episode twenty one through twenty six. Oh man, it's a stretch. So we're gonna try to get through these quick today, or else it's gonna be a four hour podcast. Woo! Hey, we're only so far. Our intro is only four minutes and about four seconds, and Rob can get it going. Hey. Normally now. these intros were like twenty one minutes. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> the past few ones. So yeah, we're on, we're on the right All track. Right. Let's go. So this one starts starts out with uh Jet doing a monologue kind of just like, oh, this was a weird case. So here's the story of this weird case I did. But yeah. he's on Mars. Uh he got a notice from an old contact of his named Pow. This dude who is a feng shui master on Mars. Um, I like this. When mm. Mars is like apparently the kind of the new earth like yeah, earth yeah. Uh, is is a total ruin at this point all of the rich people anybody that can afford it is on mars at this point that's yep. where most of the business is happening so about to happen. i think they kind of set it up mars as that as like super rich and super poor is all you got right yeah i mean sure yeah because there's people that are trying to live there that cannot yes so, sounds like san francisco or la yes or new york or new york <laughs> any <laughs> major city in the u.s 
pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rich Good and poor trouble. people. <laughs> so uh, Jet is looking around for this old guy, Pow, that he used to know. He got this letter from him that just said, Seek the holy beast of Anzan. I am where the four gods meet. So something really cryptic. He doesn't know what it means. Yeah. He's checking all his old contacts, reaching out, uh, trying to follow the path. And where it ends up leading him to is a cemetery. His, his buddy Pow has got a headstone there, and he's just like, oh. I, I, I guess he's dead. So then who sent me this message? Right. But um, it's not long after he's standing there when this girl pops up from behind the headstone. It's just like, yo, get back here. <laughs> you know, you're in danger right now. And sure enough, like bullets start flying start immediately. Yeah. But it's, I mean, can you imagine having a life like this? Damn. Like, it's just like, oh, bullets. I guess we'll duck. Why are we being shot at right now? Again? Well, I mean, since he's a bounty hunter, I guess it's just he should always be on alert. But. I mean, arguably, but if you're a bounty hunter, the only people really should be coming after you, people you already caught, which they're caught, mm-hmm. or people who know you're coming after them because you're there. So or just, people that you caught, and their people are like, man, you caught the homie, dog. We got to get revenge. Okay. All right. Yeah. I can see that. I can yeah. see that. It I could happen. That. <laughs> I will point out that these two people that are pursuing them, I, I mean, that's it's just a bad plan. They're shooting from a distance. This guy's got a pistol, and the uh, his buddy's got a pair of binoculars just going like, you know, like, oh, left. You know? Like, Come on, what's, man. Like he has <laughs> a sniper, sniper rifle. Yeah. 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 You had a yeah. sniper range with a fucking nine millimeter. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> you know what's funny? I didn't even notice that, but now that you say it, like, how stupid. Like, why didn't they just walk up and act like they didn't know who they are and just These blast them. idiots. It's it's just not a good plan. But um, so he gets pulled back behind the headstone and there's this girl back there uh, who introduces herself uh, as Mayfa and we find out soon uh, that it's Pow's daughter. Um, and she's looking at this weird compass device that I've never seen anything like that before. I don't know if this is real. Yeah. Because uh, fe- I know feng shui is a real thing. I don't yes. know if these sort of uh, instruments are, are really part of that. But she's Interestingly, like, yeah. I was looking at it too. Like, I, I, I my, my, my twin brother, Alonzo, mm-hmm. and his wife, Amani, are, are hippies. Mm-hmm. So for me, I was looking like, do I recognize this? Because they be doing stuff. But no, yeah. I didn't recognize <laughs> it either. But uh, she says, she's looking at that thing like, oh, I'm going to get us escape route out of here. Like, she's kind of like reading the or, or the fortunes or something like that it's kind of telling her the energy of the universe and how she how they're going to get out of the situation i'm all for the energies of the universe I'm i mean hey for that open yourself uh, up to it oh uh, are you but i'm not too? using this goddamn compass man get the <laughs> fuck that shit hold on wait a second let it no let's just get let's just get to it. like you know how i don't know if you remember like brandon growing up or rob or anything like that when people just start shooting you run you don't look for I don't there's no escape route. You split off well you shouldn't split up. Oh, there's so many assumptions in that statement. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh huh. You you you've been shot at before? Have I been yes, I've been shot not tor- not aimed at. I've been in a shooting where shooting was happening, but it wasn't aiming for me, no. Okay. No. I but when once you what but I've when heard you hear gunshot, a gunshot, you I'm just, out of there. You I'm not I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not Have looking. You ever been in that I'm not saying, yo, you got the compass, no, Brennan. Brennan's like, hold so. on, bro. Uh, it says north. I no, we're dead. No, I, I get what you're saying. It was just really funny because what you did in setting that up, you're like, yeah, so Brennan, like, you know what I'm saying? When gunshots happen, I mean, yeah, Rob, you too. Um, that's what happened. I don't want to leave Rob out. No, I get it. But I don't at know first, Rob's background like, like that. No, it's just funny because, Rob, like, you're not watching the podcast. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. It's February. I'm black. Keenan's black. Rob doesn't happen to be black. No. And Melanin deficient. You assume that yeah. I had been in a shoot, like been you're from Detroit. Country. I'm from Flint. Flint. Uh, Sorry. But, yeah, I mean you're right. That doesn't you change right. a whole yeah. lot. Flint's yeah. got a reputation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Flint's amazing. Y'all All stop right, that. Cool. Cool. Um, so they're running uh, using this compass, but I mean the compass works. It, they they jump on a bus, then from there onto into like a canal, and they're out of there. Yeah. Like they they may manage to get out, um, and they're back on the bebop, having you know left their pursuers in the dust, and they're catching up. And you got the other crew members, Spike, Faye, and and Ed, kind of looking on, going like. Who the fuck is this Who's new girl? This girl yeah. up in here, though. Yeah. And there's some theories. Like, is she a girlfriend, girlfriend or like a, a some sort a, of love a, child? Yeah, strange child. Or yeah, something. yeah. And so they're kind of talking about this and going back and forth. And Ed, who is you the know, best, is the best in this. Got no filter. Just walks right Zero. up to him and is just like, "So, are you the girlfriend or the daughter?" Oh wait, like, no, we're skipping over a part that I thought was really funny. Oh yeah, because <laughs> they were saying like, "Is that is that the girl?" Like Faye was like, "Is that uh, uh, Jet's girlfriend?" And then Spike was like, nah, nah, she's too young for that. And then Edward, like, floated along the floor and was yeah. just like, <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She's like, like, hot dog in the yeah, bun or yeah, something like that. Like, not, not too young, hot dog in the bun. Yo, <laughs> I was just like, what? 
Ed has been great comic relief. I know that people don't fuck with Ed so much, but I, I like done. Ed now. Yeah. I was done. I was like, Edward <laughs> so is a funny. bad influence. <laughs> at, oh, the, at the age that she's at, too. Bad influence. She shouldn't know that. Yeah. No. So, uh, of course, they're just like, no, 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 it doesn't have anything to do. Like, that. that's not it at all. He And Jet apologizes to her. It's just like, I'm sorry for, you know, uh, my, my strange crewmates here. Um, but, you know, he hasn't seen Pow in 10 years. He's like, I, I don't, I haven't talked to your dad in a long time. This came out of nowhere. And she's like, I haven't really seen my dad in a long time either. But the fact that you got this message and three days later he dies, like, yeah. makes me think... There's something going on here. Maybe yeah. he could still be alive out there. There's still some hope for that. Mm. Um, and she thinks that th- these coordinates that he's been given in this message will lead them to this thing called the Sunstone. So they go out, uh, you know, looking uh, back in the city on Mars, you know, where this could possibly lead them. They think that it could possibly lead them to Pow. And uh, as they're looking around, uh, you know, Mepha's kind of teaching Jet about Feng Shui and yeah. just about like these are the four different gods. There's like the white tiger, the black tortoise. You know, I forget some of the others. The the uh, they're oh, the I think the phoenix. Yeah, there's a red yeah. phoenix yeah. and then a blue dragon. And yeah. then, but not only that, that there's different types of energies. There's you know. Uh, there's like astral energy that kind of comes from space. There's Earth terrestrial energy, energy yeah, that yeah. comes from the ground, and then yeah, there's, there's like the, the human energy, right? Human being, energy, yeah. being and being. Said, yeah. Humans and animals, I think she said. Yeah, like pretty much all living organisms yeah. have their own right. energy waves, and Bro, that's what feng shui is. Children are watching this shit. It's like I would have never got this in '98. Oh no way, no way. At this age now, I was like this. This is some deep shit right here. The energies <laughs> and, and bodies. Did you, what'd you fuck up, Brennan? No, nah, man, keep going. We good. <laughs> oh, my God. We out here, I bro. I saw Cam look at you like, bro, what are you doing? I set this up perfectly. He did, too. All this hard <laughs> nah, work. we out here, man. Hey, I own this mic, man. I can do what I want. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, yeah, break true. whatever you want. But I, lo- but I love I love this type of stuff that they're, they, they're dropping some deep stuff in this anime. That's why I always say rec- these old animes, if you watched when you were younger, like, 13 to like 16, I would definitely say rewatch now because you probably understand some shit that's completely different now. Oh, 100%. Oh, you just broke a whole different part of that fucking mic stand. <laughs> it's all oh good, man. We got it. I'm out here. All nah, right, cool, cool, cool. Keep talking. It's cool. a good episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> gracious. using those energies, she thinks she has a, a theory on what this coordinate is and that, like, sp- the where even Jet showed up, the time and the place that they met, like, was perfect feng shui that this will all line up and lead them to finding her father. So, so they go to this hotel where they stand up and she's just like, look at there's representations of the representations of the four gods right there. And she yep. points out like different, um, you know, building structures or land masses. I up. never would have saw that. No, I mean, she's looking for it, man. That's confirmation yeah. bias right there. <laughs> I guess I never I, I it just wouldn't happen. But they say like somewhere right here is where the sunstone is so they 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 head down and they're looking around kind of this market and they find this like statue and there's this black rock in the statue of this lion and she reaches in and pulls it out and they figure out this must be the sunstone yep and taking it back to the bebop there they do some tests on it and they find out i mean they call it a sunstone but what this actually is is part of that moon rock that was part of the gate accident back you know 50 some odd years ago that was imbued with all this crazy energy and we know this energy is crazy because we met a person in a few episodes ago that was imbued with the same energy and it stopped him from aging. He was yeah. like a 70 year old man in yeah. yeah. the body of a child. Little piece of shit. He Good was call back there. absolute piece of shit. Yeah. Horrible human being. Glad he died. Yes. Damn. <laughs> wow. I don't hey, know if I've ever Green. said that before. I mean, he's not a child. He's a 70 year old man that yeah. like he killed multiple people and like push an old man in a wheelchair down a set of stairs. Once you pull Fuck push that a, kid. Exactly. You push a handicapped person down a down a stairs. You deserve every bit was coming to you. <laughs> you a fuck. But as they're on their way back to the bebop, <laughs> they get jumped by the same people that have been following them before. And uh, it's these dudes kind of dressed up like the Blues Brothers, which I read is what that was a reference to, apparently. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, so Jet, I mean, they they know they're being followed, one of those kinds of things. And they, they lead an ambush. And they beat the shit out of him. Jet's got, Jet's got one of them in like a headlock and just like, you, you know, like, tell me who you are. I love this part. This is crazy. He gets all, the guy talks, sings like a fucking bird. Like, it was so great. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> you just squeeze them a little bit. <laughs> Everything you need to know, I'll tell you right now. 
So it turns out that from the Blue Snake Syndicate, which is a, a mafia family that we haven't heard of, but there's many syndicates on Mars. Uh, we've we've heard of the Red Dragon Syndicate. I think there's a White Tiger Syndicate. Yeah. Uh, you know, Spike and Vicious being former members of the the Red Dragon. Power Rangers. Yeah. It sounds like. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. We basically like color animal. That's your mafia family. Hey, and it's yeah. funny because the Red Ra- the Red Ranger had a, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And there was a white lion. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no, that's a good point. White, that was yeah. white dragon, right? Uh, uh no. It was the a white tiger dragon. or the dragon was green. Yeah, the the, 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 the yeah, dragon that was the green. green hit the food. Oh, I know, like that brontosaurus looking thing. You know, is that what you're talking about? I remember that that yeah, big yeah, ass yeah. dinosaur. Yeah. When did that come? I never could figure out why that would show up. Like you remember there was that big, like you said, brontosaurus thing in the Power Rangers. Yeah, it was never a specific Power Rangers. No, Zoid or Zord or whatever it's called. Mm. But it would just show up sometimes and save the day. Mm-hmm. But it never would combine with the other. It was just like it did combine, like, but it was basically just like. A the Megazord's like with chariot yeah. or something. Yeah, like they just hopped yeah. in the back and like <laughs> shot some lasers out of the. I know that's sword. super yeah. random, but that used to be like my favorite one. Yeah, that? I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. That's what is the that? Show oh, one. but that's the red. That's, that's red the, dragon. That's the red, red dragon. dragon. So yeah. no, you. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, side anyway. note, real quick, super quick. What was your favorite Power Ranger? I know what your answer is. Who? Who? Yeah, out of I the mean, original, of, of the, the original, original ones, the original seven. Of course, it was it was a Black Ranger. Yeah, I know. and then um, I like, the red, like, I like the, green, the Red Ranger too. Anybody like the Green slash White Ranger? Because I always hated. The I did not like. I was I liked the Red Ranger. I C- Cam like, what? Yeah, see that's the thing, and uh, I, I just I knew everybody. The everybody green and white I knew Ranger loved lost the Green every and the White Ranger. Single fight. Yeah. I like the Green Ranger. Took every uh, L. He I came remember in, that. Jason was totally macking on Kimberly, and then Definitely fucking was. Tommy shows up on yep. the scene, and <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is this dude? He just also, showed up, and I was wa- I wanted the Red Ranger to get the pink. <laughs> See, that's what you it was. What <laughs> you guys, stupid. You guys, yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got it. But here's the thing. So you were a Jason fan. I, d- I, I did. Well, actually, I ended up liking Rocky more. Who was okay. the replacement Red Ranger? But that's not original. I just liked the Red Ranger's vibe. Billy, I, I probably seems like I'd be a Billy guy, but he was <laughs> way too much of a fucking nerd. Like, shut up, Billy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I vibed uh, with the Blue Ranger. Not gonna front. I, I was mean, a Donatello Blue Ranger. I liked Donatello. Velma. No, totally. But I yeah. hated watching the Blue Ranger fight without his costume. He was so trash. Useless. Man. Yeah, I oh, agree with he that. Sucked. Oh, so wait, so who's your favorite? You said Red Ranger. Yeah, yeah. I like. You the said Red Black Ranger. Ranger. Black and Red Ranger. Black and Red Ranger. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Black and Red Ranger for me too. I just was hoping it would be something. I wanted, I wanted to say something like yellow, but no, no. nobody cared about. I, I mean, no, I didn't know anybody who's was, was like. I think yellow. She actually died in a car accident too. Right? She did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, really? it was really sad. Yeah, yeah oh, like with her wedding sad. party, it was really yeah, sad. Was crazy. I'm talking about the character, not the person, Cameron. Stop it. <sighs> Cameron's over Brand. here like, yeah, you should feel bad. I'm, I'm talking brought, about the character. You brought the whole podcast oh, man. down, you asshole. Oh, Brennan. <laughs> Anyway, guys, we, better, we better get back to the show and try to save Anyways, this thing. I don't Cowboy know. Cowboy Bebop. Let's try to pull up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Jet's got this guy pull in the, the ship up, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's telling him, like, hey, we're from the Blue Snake Crime Syndicate. We're following you because we were supposed to find out where Pow was, and we couldn't find him. I hate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and so that lets them know that Pow really is still out there. These people that they thought were responsible for his death, they don't they don't know where he is. Right. And all we heard is that he, he died somewhere in some accident in hyperspace on his way to Jupiter. So Jet gets that, in, that information and immediately snaps this dude's neck. Like he's got. He's so he not killed him. No, oh yeah, I think he killed him. I thought he just knocked. That he like he put just him to sleep like now. he like, squeezed. You heard a pop, and then like all these kids came r- running over and just like snatched all his stuff. I was That's, like, yo, <laughs> I was like, these kids are fucking cold blooded. Yeah, they were just like grab his shit, grab his wallet. <laughs> they didn't even care that he was out, man. That's why. That's why I think he was passed out, not dead. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe I don't know. I I heard a neck pop. That's what it sounded like to me. He's yeah. dead. Ugh. Yeah. Because he was so, just like, oh, please don't kill me. Clack. Dead <laughs> kids steal the wa- steal the the shades. I'm just like these kids are savage. Yeah, yeah. So they're back. Uh, they they're, they're figuring out that this is a part of the moon incident. And um, what they're like, how are we going to try to use this? Like, how does this help us find? Uh, Mifa's dad and it's actually Ayn is the one that kind of figures it out like a couple good episodes here in this stretch for Ayn he grabs the rock and brings it over to Ed who's Mm. playing with the big compass thing Mm. and it turns out they totally like attune to each other and start reacting they're like oh if we put these two things together Mm -hmm. they think that that uh, Pow has a corresponding moon rock and they can try to use it as a compass to try to find him shout out to Ayn yeah I don't know why that's the first thing I would have thought of yeah, it does make I, sense. When I saw it, I was just like, y'all, y'all, as a crew, y'all smarter than this. 
Hmm. Anyways, I maybe would never, I would not have figured that out. <laughs> I would have thought to just bring it out like these two things. All right, whatever. And they got figured out. We, he gave me one thing. Yeah. Here's the other thing yeah. he was trying to hide. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So they're they're le- they leave and they try to go find the coordinates. They're in hyperspace and they're on their way there. And um, Mifa and Jet are talking and. Uh, you kind of have a heart to heart here where Mifa's just like, yeah, I didn't really get along with my dad. He was like way too into his work. He didn't really believe in the energy in between people. He was all about like that astral like energy. Yeah. And so he was just always moving around, never with me or my mom. So my mom left and I grew up without him and I kind of always resented him. And the fact that he sent you this message before me, before or, me kind of yeah. says a lot. Yeah, and um, sounds like a typical anime dad. It is definitely the, some. Oh, it sounds no. like. Yeah, we don't got to go deep into it. We're oh, gonna do a separate no. episode eventually, but a yeah. shitty anime dad like always. But uh. Jet tries to, you know, tries to co- contextualize this a little bit. He's like, "Well, listen, like the reason I knew your dad is because I used to be a cop, and he was basically an informant for me within that syndicate, yep. snitch. And I mean, he was, <laughs> uh, but you know." Maybe he was just trying to keep you out of that life, you know, kind of like when we were watching Tokyo Ghoul and there was that other dad that had worked with the syndicate and the they had the mom and daughter that couldn't be there and right, they right, couldn't right. explain to the daughter why. Yeah. And it's like, so he probably was just trying to protect his family. That's at least what Jet's trying to say. And she kind of shrugs at that and is just like, yeah, m- maybe, mm. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we'll see. So they get to the point where they, the coordinates where they think they're supposed to find this guy and... They, there's no ship. There's nothing. They're just like, well, we're in the right place, but there's nothing here. And while they're continuing to look, another ship from the Blue uh, Serpent Syndicate shows up right behind him, releases some drones, and they're immediately under attack. Yes. So Spike and Faye launch their ships, and they go out, and they try to fight off the drones. And I like to point out that it's really weird that a show that this advanced in the future is using drones like this for the very first time. Like, Don't you think if you had an attack ship that was going to be having things to attack, you would just use a bunch of drones yeah i mean it makes sense okay just throwing it out there as you were hey so they're they're fighting it and uh they're 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 doing pretty well i mean they're they're holding their own there's a lot of them they're kind of outnumbered um but while they're doing the fighting uh spike or i'm sorry jet and uh and ed actually kind of come up with this plan that maybe if they can energize this stone with some sort of energy that will help them figure it out so they literally flush the thing down the toilet um, and it comes shooting out the back of the ship, and they tell Spike to blast it with his cannon, which, I mean, this thing is about the size of a fist. Yeah. yeah I'm just like, how is he going to, in the vacuum of spa- and his black, space? Floating through space. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, Spike is Spike, bro. You see his aim. His aim has it, been masterful through this It's a really black show. rock the so- coming out of the the poop hole uh, <laughs> of another ship. Not even launched from the ship. Literally flushed out of the toilet. Mm-hmm. The I'm same color you. as the vacuum of space. I'm not I'm with disagreeing you. with you I'm on with this. You, but okay. It's a stretch. You got to look at Spike's aim from episode one to now. It's been on point. He's not wrong. It's it has been. Point. It's the size of a fist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, I, You right. could give it to him like he knows where it flushes out and he's just sweeping across. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I can, that's the best I can kind of come up with. But that's neither here nor there because he does hit it. He blasts the rock. It opens up this gateway, and it pulls all of the rest of the drones in and destroys them. Mm, and uh, Conveniently, yes. Mm. And then right on the other side of that is this mysterious other ship. And it's not long after that that a transmission comes through, and it's POW. And he's there. He's talking to Jet and Mifa, and he's you know, thanking them for following his message and... At first, Spike's just like, you know, like, why why'd you reach out to me? And he's like, well, I trusted basically in the powers of Feng Shui that you would find my daughter and bring her here. And he's like, he yeah. didn't she didn't come here because of Feng Shui, dude. She came here because she wanted to find you like you're her fucking dad. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, that's that's real. Yeah. I mean, and he, <laughs> he does. OK, so um, he's just like, yeah, all right. Like, he, I, I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. And she's just like. Kind of told tells him what she told uh, Jet earlier that I hated you like yeah. my whole life. Yeah, but, but I don't anymore. I don't anymore. At and least such a cop out. It's so, like <sighs> I, I like to examine this for a moment, gentlemen. Do you guys mind? Okay. Go ahead. Right. So I am a uh, an informant for a crime syndicate. I've been doing that for quite some time. I have a daughter. My wife leaves me, takes the daughter. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't follow up with that because of the life that I live. Mm. I'm ready to be done with this. 
The syndicate will chase me to the ends of the earth and also kill my family unless they know that I am dead. I fake my death. And instead of going into hiding, I find a hyperspace loop where I'm going to starve to death in a ship alone. And that's the choice that I make is to go there. And Maybe he hope, just didn't know. And then hope that the, my daughter and a uh, detective I acquaint, acquainted with, was acquainted with mm -hmm. is going to bring a space rock I left in the mouth of a dragon in the middle of Mars, blow it up with an ion cannon so that they can communicate with me briefly. That's Man, that all was, I can that say to that wish? is faith makes people do crazy shit. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> you know what he I mean? said the feng shui or whatever it was right there. Yeah. You just and that's really all it boils down to is he's like he didn't oh, want to yeah, like, be around his daughter. Like I'm saying it's like I, I assume he's like if I'm around her she's gonna die because they're yeah. gonna kill me. You look at all those type of movie, movies when there's not, not necessarily an informant, but somebody that lives a crazy lifestyle where people are coming after them. They're always looking at their daughter from afar, at least, like sending them like maybe notes. And they're like, is this from my dad? Did he send this to me? I don't know. And something. Or they, they see the dads just like around the corner just spying on their own daughter or son. It's like, man, I was going to have my family back, but you I mean can't. Like, you mean like Goku? Yeah, <laughs> some, some I'm like, looking at it from you down from above, son. Piccolo, raise that boy. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, this dude, he is another, and he's gonna go on the list of anime shitty dads. And he had a, he had like a split second of a moment. Yeah, he it, did. And that was it. This is it. It's just, well, you know, they they kind of give each other the I love yous. They're like, you know, come out of there. We can't go in. And he's like, no, there's no coming back out of here. I'm about to run out of oxygen. Like, this is it. This is my last transmission. Like, I'm, I'm with Rob. I don't think he did it on purpose. I think he was like, how do we get out of here? Oh, shit. Yeah. I I'm about to start to death on this shit. <laughs> I, yeah, I think he probably was a little arrogant. Yeah. And was like, oh, I got this figured out. Uh, this whole thing seems like the work of a man who thought he had shit figured out. I agree, yeah. And uh, I can get with that. he didn't. I can get with that. So, that makes more sense. Yeah. So, he, he was messing with shit he really didn't understand. And... Because clearly these rocks are w way more powerful than anybody can really deal with, and so they make their peace, and and, and there's a tearful moment between the two of them, and the and the gate closes, and they bring her back, and uh, and Jet closes the episode saying, and after that things pretty much went back to normal, except I stopped reading horoscopes, <laughs> which t to me is like I I, the opposite of what the he opposite been doing. Yeah, reaction. I didn't, I didn't get that either. Can, just a quick question: Can you forgive that quickly? Like if that's a parent. Can you forgive that easily in a situation like that? If I know it's the very last conversation I'm ever going to say, no. No, I cannot. That's tough. That nope. is very tough. Nope. I want more <sighs> than a pathetic, oh, uh, well, what happened? What? But then, <laughs> like, but then at that point, your last <laughs> words are that, and now you're going to be like, yo, I understand what happened this whole time. I didn't, get, I didn't get a chance to know this person, but now my last words was pretty much like, eat a dick, pops. And and now right. I mean, and now you I get live it. with that. I'm not gonna say I forgive you. I might say I love you. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Dad, I wish we could have more time together. I love you, uh, but I can't forgive you. Right? I can't forgive you. Did yeah. you, do you I guys, don't think that's a bad way to go. Do you guys watch Power at all? TV show Power? No, I don't. No. Do you care? No, I say no. I'm probably like never. Spoiler, spoiler for Power coming happening. Uh, Keenan likes to spoil things. Yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, but in, in that particular show, the, his son, and the, the main character, Ghost, his son pretty much turns against him um, and wants to become a, what? A, oh. <laughs> like a camera. Like, oh, <laughs> camera's like, oh, on. shit, I was oh, going to watch man. that. He pretty much turns against him because he, he's trying to take his, his dad's life down. His dad's trying to turn straight and not be a, uh, like a, a gangster anymore, a drug dealer anymore. And then so his son ends, ends up being the one that kills him. And then his son's kind of like, yeah, I, kill, like, I, I did this. I had to do this shit. And then they, the cops are coming after him. Or no, Tommy's about to kill him, and he's like, "Nah, his, his best friend Tommy." He's like, "No, don't don't kill my son. Like, let him go." And then his son goes, "Like, oh fuck, like, my my dad does love me, pretty much." And he now it's 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 fucked up his head to where my dad wanted me to live because it was a some other shit that was gonna there was that was gonna put him in jail, mm. and that's what I feel like he did in this particular moment. Like he. He had a fuck you moment. His dad had a moment where he was just like, I love you, son. And now the kid is like, I shouldn't have did that. Yeah. And now he has to live with that for the rest of his life. Ugh. So you think you can just live with that choice of like being like a dick to, in that last moment of life? I told you what I'd say. I don't think I could personally. I think I'd probably just, even if I had some shit that I had to resolve, there's I would still have time to do that. Yeah. Where it's just like, all right, this is this person's last moment. I, I probably... I'd probably would just say do what she did, to be honest, even if she didn't feel that entirely resolved. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. 
That's but a good question. Brennan, Brennan, you're a harsh person. You're not a harsh person, but I, uh, I feel like what I said was reasonable, though. Like, I love you. I'm happy I got to see you, but I, I'm not able to forgive you right now. I'm going to work on that. I love you. And okay, 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 you know, okay. Like, yeah. I'm not yeah, being unreasonable. I'm it's not like F you, die. I'm not unreasonable. You're right. I'm sorry. You know? I forgot what you said. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can be unreasonable. I fully understand that, but I don't think that was the moment. All right, go ahead, Ralph. So um, uh, the I, next episode is uh, starts out with we kind of see this delivery man, um, you like going around placing these little like like teddy, teddy bear. bears just in random places. Can I? I like this part. Go for it. Yeah. So it opens up with this guy delivery. He just puts a teddy bear on a, a on a bar that's like out, overlooking in the big building. It's like overlooking the view of the city. Gets on an escalator. He's riding down. Spike rolls up behind him with the teddy bear, puts it on his shoulder. Loved like, well, it. hello, my friend. And the guy's just like, oh, uh, he's like, so uh, what you doing with these teddy bears? Did you drop this? And the dude was just like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, no. He's like, I never said it was yours. And he's just like, uh. I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> yeah, so I, Spike got him. That's what yeah. it is. Spike was like, I know who you are. And the dude was like, I know who you are, too. He's like, what? Yeah, you're Spike. And the matter of fact, it's the two people nobody wants to get caught by is Spike or Andy. And Spike is like, Andy? Mm -hmm. And then, like, as soon as he says that, there's a whistling. And it sounds like an old Western happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. A whistling. Yep. Yeah. And out comes Andy on a literal, in the in this time of space and, and ships, my man is riding a, uh, a full-grown horse. Comes crashing through a window. Crashing yeah. through a window. The a real cowboy horse. bebop. <laughs> the real cowboy yeah now he crashes through the window and immediately is just like spike you are the guy i'm looking for obviously which he wasn't he's looking for the teddy bear Idiot. bomber right and uh attacks spike drives him by the note uh puts a noose around his neck and mm -hmm. then like drags him back up the escalator and then the, the teddy bear guy gets away well not only that he's just he not only gets away he's got like four more bombs on yeah. his wrist <laughs> yeah that he manages to blow up because I mean, they must not want to be caught by Andy because he's a stone cold fucking moron. Like, yeah, this dude is because <laughs> he's looking at him like, oh no, that's a security guard. He can't possibly be. He's like, Spike is like, his face matches the bounty. Like, oh, in this day and age, you can't mm. trust a face. Man. Oh like, man, so yeah, but you can trust me. an outfit. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. I hated this dude. Oh from my the god, kid, go, bro. <laughs> I hated him. Uh, so, me too, man. And, and so Spike gets back to the bebop and he's telling the crew what happened. And they're just like, what the? So. Ed even ends up looking him up, and it's just like, oh yeah, he, it turns out this he's some rich bounty hunter that basically joined this cowboy association, also called the YMCA, <laughs> which is ridiculous, hilarious. Yeah. He's um, a member of. She found him because he was a member of the YMCA. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's just like some rich boy shit to just be like, I just want to get into some some crime stuff. Some bounty nah, hunter. No, you can shit. just own a business. No, <laughs> he wants a life of excitement. Yeah, and so they're saying he, that, that not only all that, not only does he right. Uh, does he rub Spike the wrong way? But he looks like him and acts like him. Yeah. And Spike is not seeing it. Nope. Nah. Um, I didn't want to see it too much at first either. Because Faye, cause Faye was saying it and they were all saying it. He's like, he, he, he is you. And I, was I, like, I, was, I was with you, Keenan. I wasn't with oh, yeah. I wasn't buying it quite. Yeah, right, but right. It, came, it showed up. Yeah. It showed up eventually. But yeah. I was just like, eh, not at first. Yeah. Um, but they do end up having a second th a second area where they think they're going to grab this guy, this masquerade ball. They all get all dressed up. And Spike catches him again. And Spike catches him again, and which is crazy because this, this dude is at a masquerade where you can have your face covered, and his costume is a, a teddy, teddy bear, bear costume with the face cut out. It is, and he's just like, how did you find me? He's like, I'm <laughs> fucking looking at you, dude. Like, like, you're in a teddy bear costume with your face out. But and you know what? Maybe he's smarter than we give him credit for because they're about to put this dude in cuss, and who should show up? Out of a fucking elevator with a horse. <laughs> It's fucking Andy. Yeah. Are you kidding <laughs> the me? Whistling happens he again put an elevator in a horse. I mean, he, he looks, does that a lot in this episode. His costume is much more appropriate in this sort of environment. I'll wow. Give him that yeah. And, was, and I'm sorry, a horse and elevator. I said that. <laughs> yeah. Boo. It is. It yeah. just is. It's a costume. So <laughs> he shows up and he's just like, ah, yes, the teddy bear bomber. And immediately points at Chet. And, and Spike is just like, dude, I told you this guy is an idiot. And he's like, or maybe it's you. And they're like, no, dude. I just saw you yesterday. Today. I I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't. I have no recollection of us meeting. Yeah, he's just like, what? 
And so then, it's, of course, the, the calamity ensues. The, yeah, the Taliban bomber blows stuff up again. Because he's like, I hate being ignored. So he just starts Oh, that's the funniest part of the bombs. episode. The hilarious part. This episode yes. was actually legit funny because they kept yes. ignoring the bomber. And the bomber's entire purpose is to get attention. Yeah. And give and so, his message off. Yeah, he's like, people need to understand that I'm blowing this up because of an intention. And let me tell you guys what it is. And every time he started to try to tell, like <laughs> they would like ignore him immediately and start fight, infighting. So he blew him up pretty much he blew up the whole area and dipped out in a car yeah um and then so everybody scatters at that everybody point. scatters yeah. when he blows it up yeah and so he drives out with the car and he's on a chase he's gonna run and spike goes to his ship and andy gets on his horse but faye is kind of digging him she thinks he's cute he's yeah. like yo can i can i get a ride yeah in the elevator too it was real it was a moment there was um and uh she jumps on the back of the, of the, of the horse they run after the car they're going after the car, which is what they think they're doing. Mm-hmm. And Spike's going after the car, too. And then uh, Andy starts shooting at Spike's uh, spaceship. It's like, what are, dude, what are you doing? Why are you shooting at the spaceship? So <laughs> so Spike shoots a bunch of building stuff, debris down, and stops the teddy bear killer. I mean, teddy bear, yeah, the teddy bear bomber. Yeah. yeah. And like, he does that. And it's like, all right, that's what's up. Like, he's trapped him. And then as that's happening, Andy continues to chase Spike. <laughs> and shooting up the entire city with these grenade launchers trying to catch him in the in the ship. Which, as we know, it's almost impossible to shoot this man out of the sky. Yeah. From yeah. what we've seen in this show. If you can't shoot him down with a bunch of ships, you can't go shoot him down with one damn rocket launcher. And our teddy no. bear bomber gets away again. Uh, he again. does. And so... And so now we kind of have a split <laughs> where Faye's back at Andy's place, you know, kind of trying to be like, oh, so like you're rich or whatever, right? And he's just like, yeah, I got all this like Kansas soup with my face on it, girl. Like, you want <laughs> some of this you, soup? Oh, you trying to get this <laughs> soup, girl? <laughs> and normally, I mean, I guess Campbell's the- Chucky. <laughs> Horrible. Horrendous. Ah, no soup for you. No, no soup for you. <laughs> no soup for you. Oh, God. <laughs> and I, maybe that might work on some women, the whole rich thing and all this, but she Most. is not joking. Oh, whoa. It would work boy. on me. Hey, it right. works on me. <laughs> you sexist so girls, pig. It's not sexist. I said it worked on me. <laughs> the day, if I was single and there was a fine girl was just like, what's up? And she's rich. That adds to the. And she looks into your eyes and is just like, here's the looking at my reflection in your eyeballs. Like, this just la- laid down on Faye. You're not going to be like, oh, this might be a sociopath. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you're, I mean, uh, it's a st- red flag. You're going to still do it, Brennan, and be like, afterwards, she was a sociopath. But I had to do it because, ah. Uh. I mean, well, she Faye, had, she Faye is fun. not feeling it. No. Faye is not feeling this doing, but she's like, all right, bro, you're full of yourself, and I'm sick of it. But she stayed the night. She did. She came back yeah. and just like, I got souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we were did it, saying. Did it go down? And they didn't I, explicitly say. Rob believed that it did. I kind of think it did because I, I think, think so she'd just too. be like, ugh, like I'm here. Uh. <laughs> and she stayed the night. You know, it's like. I guess since I'm here. And she she he changed was, clothes. And he was the closest thing to Spike. Mm-hmm. She came back in a whole different outfit ah, with a bunch of souvenirs and gifts. Ah, he gave her a goodie bag on the way out, just like, yeah, tell yeah. your friends. You Enjoy your with walk of Andy shame. Andy the cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> that tell is your friends about Andy. Horrible. <laughs> Pass out the bag. soup. So she everybody. comes back thoroughly unimpressed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, agreed. <laughs> thoroughly unimpressed. Tosses a can of soup. It's just like, I got souvenirs for folks. Here you go. Here you go. And, um, they're just like, all right, so like we're still on the tail of this bomber. How are we going to find him? Well, at this at this point, Jet and Faye are immediately like, I'm out. This is ridiculous. Yeah. You and this Andy dude, Spike, like you, uh, you're just too similar. Like this, we don't want any part of this. Right. But Spike needs to needs to finish this. So Ed figures out that what this teddy bomber or what this teddy bear bomber is doing is blowing up all the largest buildings on the planet they're on, which I think is Mars. But there, mm. he started with the tallest, di- went to the second tallest, and he's working his way down. They're like, oh, all right, well then, so knowing that information, Spike goes uh, where the next, uh, where he figures the next bombing is going to happen. Sure enough, the guy's there. And the guy immediately starts going into a spiel about just like, he does. oh, I had like a plan, and just like, I don't even usually go after people. And Spike's like, yeah, 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 whatever. Listen, you see Andy around here? Yeah, yeah. Where's this Andy dude? <laughs> like, <laughs> no one's giving it about him. It might be like Tony Baker's kind of character, like, the, you know, the, uh, I think it's Travis Santiago. Yeah. He's kind of yeah. like, and then I had, and the people just like, all right, See, that was my plan here. all along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's definitely getting the, yeah, the, that, that Travis Santiago treatment. And yeah, he hears a couple of guys whistling earlier, not them, but then sure enough, Andy shows up. And he's like, oh, hey, like, what are you doing here again? Kind of thing. I don't even think he still recognizes Spike at this point. No. 
But this guy finally goes into his his tirade. He's just like, I don't even believe in killing people, but I'm going to kill you two <laughs> yeah. today. Y'all so, don't pay attention to me. So he blows up the fountain they're standing next to, runs towards the elevators, and as they chase after him, they get in. But turns out he did a bait and switch on them, mm. and they're in the elevator alone. And he tells them, like, this thing is going right to the top floor, which is strapped with bombs. It's going to blow up. I like this moment in this elevator so yeah. funny to me because he was just like, <laughs> and he was like, like, as soon as they, the elevator started going up, they both look all calm. Spike just like, well, I got to take care of you. Open up this little compartment, starts yeah. like tap, typing stuff. And he's like, no need. I've already reversed the codes, reverted the codes. And Spike was like, I I, I reverted the codes too. Yeah. And then he's like, wait, wait. If we both reverted the codes, it's, then it's, it's right back to where it started. We're fucked. Ah! We are screwed. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Andy starts shooting, trying to open it. It's like it's, it's, it's bull- ricocheting bullets in the air. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty funny. They're in a straight up panic at this point. Meanwhile, back down on the ground, the teddy bear bomber is admiring his work. And oh, Faye yeah. just like walks <laughs> up and <laughs> clocks him. Yeah. Loved it. <laughs> she, she, had a, she got a strong right hook. Yeah, yeah. She does. And yeah, she, look, she got some hands. She and Jet, like, kudos to them for like playing it cool and being like, oh, no, we're out. But then just like, oh, no, we're going to cash it. They on always help each other all yeah. of them. So they get the uh, they get the, that bounty, but meanwhile, you know, uh, Spike and Andy are still on a one way ticket up to this fucking building, and it blows up. But somehow they, they survive. survive. Yeah. But now it's on and popping. Yeah. So they they manage to climb their way up. But you're right. It's, at this point, it's death. We like, got we got a scrap. Yeah. It's between the two. A- of them. Andy's on been site. getting the best of them too. So far, yeah. Andy has been getting the best of them through this whole episode, and Spike's frustration, his face. I think it was in one scene. He's like, like he's just shaking, <laughs> and he's just. Frustrated because yeah. and, and would you be? I'll be if you were Spike in this episode. Only reason why I'm frustrated is because Andy the whole time is not taking it serious. That's how I feel like. Right. So when you're not taking me serious and I'm trying to beat you, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh off. man, you shouldn't play mm-hmm. me in Super Smash Brothers then. <laughs> I mean, I play you at like Marvel vs. Capcom, and it's the other way around. I'm whooping your ass. Is anyway. it? Yes. I mean, we can do it right. Okay, as we were. As we were. So they're they're having their duel up on the rooftop. And it, 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 and you're right. It, it, true to fashion, Andy seems to still have the upper hand on Spike. Yeah. And Spike is just totally pissed. He goes tumbling off the rooftop, falls backwards, and Spike or and Andy's standing over him just like, Dude, you're not even a real cowboy. I don't even know who you are. Like <laughs> you don't deserve my, you don't deserve a horse, fam. Yeah, you're nobody. And Spike, that's why I gave Faye my <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my, my Campbell's chunky, <laughs> terrible. Gave her, gave her the thick and hearty. <laughs> the the thick, thick and hearty. Yeah, <laughs> she got the beef. <laughs> this is where I feel like I normally would say some shit like that, but y'all two are going into that. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh man, this <laughs> is low hanging uh, fruit, man. It is. Low hanging fruit. So Spike pissed. <laughs> punches like just the wall or like a random countertop near yeah. him. but because this whole thing has got like the structural integrity is totally fucked at this point yeah the whole thing like chain reaction the roof falls off andy goes tumbling backwards seemingly to his death spike goes to check up on him and he's hanging there and he pulls himself up and he goes you know what you won <laughs> i'm out you, you best broke this me. whole building I'm, I'm i don't want this danger no more pretty yeah. much takes his hat off puts it on spike's head his elevator door opens up. There's his fucking horse, like which is way better than any horse I ever had in Red Dead Redemption. Like, yeah, yeah that, that horse. Oh my god, that horse is the MVP of this episode. Yeah. Sh- you whistle, it shows up. Yes, and it not only that, up. it's like you're a horse in the time of of like spaceships, Space, yeah. and you still a a, a an actual reusable form of transportation. Mm-hmm. And that, Andy even says he plays a pretty mean game of chess. So like. <laughs> Smart horse. Maybe it's like from the same thing as the dog. Ah, Could yeah. be. Yeah. It's a data horse. Data horse. Data horse. So he gives Spike his hat and he tells him, you know what? You're the real space cowboy. See you later. Jumps on his horse and he takes said, he, off. I think he said, see you later. Yeah, he does space say cowboy. the exact yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see you later, space cowboy. So that's the, that's the same line that's on the end of every single episode before this episode. Yeah. Yeah. But so it, it doesn't end there. Doesn't no. end there. So from there, we cut to. Uh, the the paddy wagon where the teddy bomber is in the back and he's finally telling the the guard all about his his manifesto of just like we just keep building more and more and bigger and bigger it's this rampant capitalism without any soul and what are we really building towards and if you don't have any sort of philosophy that you believe in that you're just like you're building a a city without a soul and soon after that driving next or not even driving riding up next to the to the truck it's fucking Andy. 
on his goddamn horse, horse. now dressed up like a samurai. samurai. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. This episode. He looked just like Mugen, me. though. Yeah, he, he did. did. He, he did. did. Mugen is from Samurai Shampoo, if you don't know. Cracked and, me up. Bro. And this guy's just like, ah, uh, you know, this is um I guess my message didn't get across. <laughs> so <laughs> And then it ends with uh actually doesn't it say uh see you later uh, Space Samurai. Space, Space Samurai, Samurai this yeah. time. Loved it. Yeah. So this next one, Brain Scratch, I personally, I mean, I know we're going to get into our thoughts at the end. I really like this episode. This one started out with um, kind of just like channel surfing, almost like those Rick and Morty, like, yeah, or yeah. I was thinking extra like the adult swim. Episode. I was thinking it was like the adult swim thing where it's like flipping through the channels. Yeah. Um, like a Robot Chicken, I'm sorry. Oh, robot yeah, Chicken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was saying adult swim. Yeah, but Robot Chicken, like when it flips through the channels, that's what it, that's what it felt like to me. Totally. Mm. And we're just kind of seeing, and I thought this was a really cool way to show this information. And it's, um, we see this ad basically for this cult, um, which is this guy with these really wide, scary looking purple eyes, all this strange, like kind of like Illuminati, like uh, imagery going on. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of talking about like, you know, abandon your bodies. God doesn't want us to have our bodies. Our purest, you know, form is our soul. Like, join me uploading your soul into a different kind of place. And so, I mean, it's some, it's some, some heavy deep, shit. Some heavy it's deep, some deep shit. shit. Once you see triangles, that's Illuminati shit. It's def- it, eyeballs in the triangles. Like, it's, yeah. Mm. Oh, what they say, anyways. I mean, yeah. Check out Kenyon's conspiracies on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Conspiracy and, theory. Yes. But this this cult is called Scratch, and we see as they flip the channels that. Though they may have this sort of peaceful image, um, it's actually um, kind of diabolical. People mm-hmm. are committing suicide in the cult. There are others that are now missing. You know, people are saying, my loved one that was always sort of acting fine and normal all of a sudden just got involved in this cult and totally disappeared. Drinking the Kool-Aid, Jim Jones. Uh, Jim Jones. Or, it reminded me a lot of Heaven's Gate, which is I just recently uh-uh. uh, read up on, or not read up, I listened to another podcast on the Heaven's Gate thing, and that was a whole thing where they were like, abandon your earthly bodies, like, like we need to ascend to a higher like understanding where we're no longer in our, inside our bodies oh, um shit. which is i uh. mean I mean, hey, it, it, it is what it is, but not not for me <laughs> personally. <laughs> not but my. who it is apparently for, at least seemingly, is Faye. Yeah. Because as they're switching channels, there's Faye just like, oh, yeah, I was sick of all my debt and I wanted to get out of my debt. So I joined this cult because once I leave my body, I won't have any more debt. Yeah. And we cut to who's watching TV and it's Spike just going like, oh, my God, Jet, get in here. You got to see this shit. Yeah. And he calls in Jet and they're just like, oh, so that's where she went. Like, do you think she's actually buying into this? And the two of them are immediately like, no, this must be some con that she's running at some point. Because yeah. they find out that the guy that's running this thing, the dude with the p- scary purple eyes, his name is like uh, Londonis or something like. Uh, yeah, Lundes, uh, Dr. Lundes, has got a 38 million Wulong fucking bounty on his head. I knew from the gate she was like out to get that bread. Yeah. Yeah. She's just trying to get close to mm, figure something out. Yeah. Um. So Faye, meanwhile, is back, you know, when they do cut to Faye after they are just like, oh, she must be into something. We better figure out what's going on and also try to get this bread. Mm. Uh, Faye, meanwhile, is on Mars looking around in some like old, like bombed out, like factory looking kind of place. She's got her gun drawn. So clearly she hasn't given up who she is. Um, she hasn't completely submitted herself to whatever this cult is. And she's looking around and she's seen a lot of dead bodies yeah. slumped over these rocks. And it starts to get pretty dark pretty fast. Mm. Um, and as she's looking around, she sees like stacks and random t- stacks of TVs, random TVs that start flipping on. And then she just like starts, her vision goes blurry and she collapses. And just before she goes unconscious, she manages to call the bebop and kind of let them know like, hey, I was on this case. Like, you got to come and get me. I'm, I might have messed up. And yeah. then she just goes out. Yep. And they don't I'm glad she's going to get that signal off, though. That was good. Yeah. Save yeah. The, save She's good at asking for help. Yeah. <laughs> She's not True. bad at that. She's yeah. good at betraying you and asking for help when she needs it. <laughs> I'm sorry I betrayed you. Help! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And so uh, Spike and Jet, uh, they go to their usual methods. They're looking around, seeing if they can try to find this dude. And uh, Spike goes around and is just kind of going up to the canvassers on the streets. You know, those you know, the people preaching the good word, the message, just like, hey, be great to join. Like, hey, can I meet Dr. Lundes? Like, where is he? And they're like, some of them are just like, oh, he's in heaven. Or, oh, like, he's back on Mars. You, like, you can meet him eventually. And then there's some one of them just like, you don't really want to join this 
this religion at all, do yeah. you? Yeah. So th- he's getting nothing. He's getting nowhere. Meanwhile, uh, Jet is trying to talk to old contacts because this Dr. Lunda's guy was some famed researcher, you know, had been doing uh, a lot of research. I don't think into the gates, but like allegedly had been doing a lot of research into energy and like the mind and stuff like neurology type stuff and goes to talk to some of the old doctors that had supposedly worked with him. And this old doctor he goes to talk to, maybe he's senile, maybe he's there, but he doesn't even seem to remember if this Dr. Lundas existed. Mm. So Jet's like, all right, well, this is a fucking wash. Like, they go back to the ship. They don't know what to do. I think this is actually when they get the call from Faye. But what they manage to do is she tells them that, like, oh, you got to go check out basically their website, that their whole cult sort of circles around this technology. It's basically like a... PSVR, like it's this virtual reality headset yeah. that uses your brain waves to kind of put you in the game. And so we see uh, Jet is at like a toy store buying the thing and brings it back and uh, brings it back to the Bebop and plugs it in. Ed and Ein are there with him and they help him set it up. They go to the website and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to join it. They put in a fake name. It's like Marshall Banana or something yeah, like yeah. that, something silly. And uh, they start going into the spiel, and this guy's telling uh, the Doctor Lunda's guy is telling him like, "Oh yeah, you need to like get away from your body, and that's not the form that we're supposed to take." And all of these weird hypnotic sounds and energy start going, and Ayn is growling at the screen that they're watching. Mm. But Jet starts to pass out, and just as he's like about to black out, Ayn bites his leg, his bites ass, the yeah. shit out, brings him, him back. Mm-hmm. Good record, episode for Ayn. I'll say, is you can tell Rob likes this episode. This is the most detail. <laughs> yeah, I want to say. He's like, getting, Rob, can yeah. we, we, can, we can lose some of the details, man. <laughs> you're getting it's pretty really detailed right now. I know, you're really detailed right it's now. It's super, it's I mean, that's, super that's cool. one reason why I don't really fuck with VR like that it's because I just, like I, like me, I don't want to be. I feel like I, I feel like I'll be. It'll be too good for me. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'll be like, yo, this shit is so fire. And now you want to live in that world instead of reality. Or yeah. what's reality at that point? People, you know, they say, oh, well, well, now you're you're you're. Kinda- I am preparing to be an old man whose body is not going to be too usable, and I will be a at one with VR at some point, <laughs> whooping all the little kids in video games. Sure. So they manage to take this off and uh, the the thing off of uh, Jet and he calls up Spike who's already on Mars and he's just like yeah we 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 think we can trace back to where the signal is coming from Jet and Spike's just like I'm already on some other shit like I'm here on Mars I'm gonna block this I'm finding out where this guy is basically tracing back where phase its signal had come from so they put Ein in the VR machine and. Ayn immediately starts hacking into this shit. This is kind of must be where he gets his data dog uh, name from. Mm-hmm. He cracks this thing. They think it's Ed at first, but Ed is just sitting back and watching and enjoying it. And they manage to track the uh, signal where this website's coming from back to this hospice uh, care place on some other planet. So back on the uh, so back on Mars, Spike is going through this the same warehouse and seeing all these people laid up in the. TV start coming on again and Dr. Lundis is talking to him just like yo I know you're a bounty hunter you're looking for your you're for your friend she's right there she's just asleep she's fine though to be fair all the other bounty hunters that were, that were here died from sleeping too long so mm. maybe you're not in such great shape um, but in the hospice care you've got uh, Ed and Jet sneaking into this facility they give the sob story about how they need to go see some long lost brother of got Ed, Ed dressed up like in a dress yeah I mean, for the first time. Uh, And they're just like, is this your son slash daughter? The security guard's confused. Yeah. (laughs) just like, and uh, I love that Jet's whole thing is just like, oh, she's weird because, uh, yeah, she found out about her brother and it drove her insane. She's crazy now. She's just crazy. (laughs) And the the, the guard totally buys into it. He's sobbing, too. And he's just like, you you can go up and see him. He's just fine. Gives him the room and everything. And uh, so Spike is having this confrontation with Lunda's and he's figuring out that Lundas isn't real. Yeah. He's there there is no Lundas. Like yeah. those all of the research, all that stuff, the reason why he's not remembered is because he's fucking fake. Yeah. Uh all this stuff has been planted. And um simultaneous to that, you've got Ed and Jet going up to this hospital bed where you have this kid strapped in. And it turns out it's this thirteen year old former hacker that had been trying to do some sort of I don't know, brain meshing with with technology and there was some sort of accident and basically his brain got locked inside the matrix or whatever. Man. And it turns out that this whole thing is him just trying to reach out for company and trying to convince other people to load their consciousnesses up into the same computer mainframe because he doesn't want to be alone. Um, and nah, he's even fam, saying, your fault. You did this. Oh, yeah. Stick it out by yourself, sucker. 
But what Spike <laughs> says to him, and he's just like, you're tricking people into going, making the same mistake you did. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm giving them peace of mind. And what I thought was, was crazy is just like, I'm getting them to believe. He goes into this whole thing of, I'm giving them peace because basically man didn't or god didn't create man man created god they believe this because they want to because they have this whole like shitty world and their only way to deal with that is knowing that there's some peace and promise after that don't don't do it to them it's it's diabolical that's 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 what the episode was man. bro this episode is too deep for children for teenagers (laughs) for grown people this shit was deep bro it was it was. And uh, as Spike is having this conversation, the, the guy starts to realize that somebody somewhere is doing something to him. And he starts to panic as Ed is shutting down like all of his connections to the to the wider Internet. And he, the one thing he does mention is just like, oh, yeah, I did this whole thing through man's greatest and worst invention, which is television, television. Yeah. Yeah. using images. And, and I immediately was just like, that. you mean Internet had it been made today? It would be the Internet. internet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So but for me, is, I just was like, it's television. This is 98 when it was just like those little animated gifs of like a stick figure like digging just like mm. you know site yeah, took, coming soon yeah this is how many visitors shown up like yeah. that was the internet back then it was so rough but uh as he starts to panic and shut down he's just like no i wish everybody had a body like me then he kind of like <laughs> fades out and and, and uh <laughs> fucking jet is cold slaps the cuss on this vegetable yeah who's <laughs> just like sitting in bed yeah uh they leave him there they they cuff him to the bed and as they're leaving, uh, Ed, you know, wishes him that, you know, hopefully now they ha- that he'll have good dreams, uh, yeah. which is kind of sad because now he's just a vegetable locked in his own head. I can't imagine those dreams are very good. No. Um, uh, I think he's having more fun before. Probably. You know, leading a cult and yeah. being an all power god into a video figure. game or some shit. They could have trapped him into a video game. Well, that's what they Something. used to do this whole thing was video game headsets. I mean... Yeah. So I mean, yeah. he, technically, he's in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> this episode right here, man, I I enjoyed watching it, but I I felt like this. I was like, man, this is like, I don't know. I was kind of lost for words a little bit. I guess. Yeah. I yeah. liked this one a lot. Maybe it was because I just had been listening to that podcast about Heaven's Gate, and it gave me very strong vibes about that. But well, if, that's what I mean. Not lost for words in a bad way, in a good way. Yeah. Just being like, damn, this is like this is a, an extremely deep episode, and it depends where you're at, probably in your life, if you're religious, yeah. if you're yeah. spiritual, if whatever you are, it can it can hit you a different way. Mm-hmm. And that's what I felt like it did when I watched this episode. Like it hit me in a in a crazy way. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah I agree. I really like that one too. But um, this next episode, uh, we see Faye uh, watching the videotape that had been delivered to the Bebop several episodes early. She's scanning the thing, looking Finally, at her old memories, shit. trying to figure out, like, see if she can remember anything. This on this old Betamax thing, and the only thing that she pauses on is this like lion fountain, and she's kind of like looking at that when. Ed Edward comes, comes out, out of nowhere. Like, I know where that is. I know much. where that is. Let's go check it out. And so Faye takes off with her. And uh, in the morning, you've got Jet and Spike are just like, like, wait, aren't we supposed to be on Mars? And they're like, this is Earth. We're yeah. on Earth. How do we do this? <laughs> the girls are gone. Damn it. Great. So uh, meanwhile, the girls have uh, are, are, are flying off somewhere, you know, and, and Faye is saying like, Ed, if you can show me this, like, I got something really good for you. Uh, but the other thing we kind of see in the middle of this that is kind of unexplained for a little bit, we see these two dudes running around in like this huge like four-wheeler tank like looking thing mm. look at chasing down these asteroids and that these moon rocks that are plummeting into earth and they they're driving down into the into the craters and trying to i guess we don't know what exactly they're doing but they're driving around checking out where all these these rocks are landing um but uh Faye and ed continue their journey and they land uh nearby where these guys are working and there's this seems to be uh like a little wreckage of a city and they're looking around and ed pulls out this little like watering can it's just like hey look it's like the little fountain you showed me and Faye's is like is that what you fucking brought me here for like <laughs> what the hell and then all of a sudden all these kids just come out of the woodwork yeah just swarm them yeah and they're just like hey you want some of this you want to buy this probably trying to like pickpocket her or something mm-hmm. like that and then they recognize ed and they're just like oh my oh, god ed. hey. edward ed's here and then this nun shows up with a hose and sprays them all down and just like all right kids like get inside like, get off the people like, yeah so disrespectful very disrespectful yeah. i hope that i get to spray kids with a hose for no reason <laughs> doesn't it just seem fun like first of all 
when I was younger, and like we'd be like walking by kids, like uh, adults' houses stuff like that, and they were like watering their garden or something like that, and they sprayed us. That was funny to us. That's yeah, fun. they probably love that. Yeah. yeah, that. But then this situation is, I feel like it's traumatizing. These kids are clearly like either adopted kids without parents and shit like Them that. Them kids did not seem bothered by that water. They're just like dive into the dirt. Oh, the at dump. that age they didn't. But let me tell you, when they hit twenty five, oh my, they goodness. can't even take a shower anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Showers up, <laughs> uh. bro. So yeah, and the the nun sprays down <laughs> Faye. Faye gets caught in the crossfire, and the nun apologizes, just like. I'm sorry, that's the only way I can get these kids to listen. Like, maybe you can join us for dinner or something like that. And um, so they, they sit down to dinner, and uh, the, the nun is kind of telling her a little bit about Ed. And the more than we've known that Ed showed up at this orphanage about five years ago, and then two years or three years after that just sort of wandered off, and nobody knew what happened to her. Mm. But coincidentally enough, recently, something, somebody came looking for Ed, and the nun is like, hey, Ed, I got something I got really nice something for you. good. It's like, that's like Ed's candy. He's like, I got you something good. Ed's like, what'd you get me? Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, it's in the top drawer, opens it up. It's a hologram of her father because her father had come and looked for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the dope. nun was just like, yeah, so I guess her dad is basically just looking around trying to map where these craters are, are going and kind of forgot about Ed. So clearly this guy, a pretty eccentric too. Yeah. Uh, just forgot that he had a daughter and just sort of took off and <sighs> another anime dad. <laughs> you guys are just trash. Well, hold on. Not good. Yeah, that's not good, but let's get to their root. Like, let's get let's move on. There's a part in this that I really like. <laughs> okay. As you know, Rob. Yes. So meanwhile, we do see Ed's father and his assistant. That they're, they're, you know, now we know who they are and they're chasing off more asteroids but we see them for a quick second but where we go after that is Faye is actually led to the landmark because that says oh I knew it actually wasn't there I just wanted to get some food yeah. I can actually show you where it is tomorrow <laughs> which is awesome um, so she does to, to her credit Ed does remember where this is and shows it to Faye and Faye is kind of looking at it nothing's coming back she's not remembering any of this when all of a sudden this old woman calls out her name and she Man. turns around like, are you Faye? Like we were high school students. Yeah, and yeah. She's like oh my god, like you have an age, and then she's like, oh yeah, that's right, you were in cryo sleep because of the accident. And yeah. Faye's like, what accident? Yeah. It's like, how do you not remember any of that? And while they're having this conversation, before Faye can get really too many answers, this old woman's granddaughter runs up and is, they're introducing her to Faye, and Faye's just like, ah, I'm I'm just a ghost. The girl gets like scared for a second. It's mm-hmm. like, anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. Sorry, like. Gr- literally grabs Ed and like throws her on like Hilarious. a fucking backpack. So funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> takes off. Um, and so they get back to the to the bebop and you know at first Jet is just kind of gives Faye like you know where the fuck were you kind of thing and she kind of gives him this look like the saddest look. Yeah, bad time, man. Not bad time. He was just like, oh, oh my bad. All yeah. right, well you know as you were. Yeah, uh, but uh, Ed is showing Ayn the hologram of her father and is trying to share something with Ayn and. Uh, but apart from that, they uh, the the Jet and Spike see that um, a new bounty has come. There up. is a new bounty, mm-hmm. and I think what? is this the part where the show gets canceled? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They find out like so they're watching the old bounty hunter show with the the the, the big shooter show or whatever, and yeah. they're giving them the lowdown, and they're just like, also this is our last episode, like we got canceled. And the girl and, is just like, she normally she's always so sweet, like da da da. But pissed. the moment she's like, I'm calling my agent. Like, yeah, yeah, I was like, out. ooh. <laughs> it's got get, real. Yeah, they get cut off. Um, so they're just like, all right, well, like, I guess we better go after this dude. Like, sorry to Ed, I guess. Um, and they go try to track him down. And where they do get, or it's actually at this point, it, I think it's it, this is where Faye may have. Um, does she have her her recollection here? She's like in the shower, kind of like yeah, feeling yeah, yeah. sorry she for to herself. Feel, she started to remember everything at that mm-hmm. point. She remembers basically that she was in some sort of space shuttle accident. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't really clear to me if it was tied to the gate accident at all. But she was in a space shuttle that had some sort of accident. They couldn't heal her at the time, so they put her into cryo sleep, and then that's when she wakes up and yep. sees it. So, which is funny because that means her origin story episode from before, when those people walk her up, woke her up. Mm-hmm. Um, there was truth to it. There was, yeah, because it seemed like that whole episode, everything was bullshit. Mm. But there was an accident. They couldn't fix her. Like all that was true. All that was true. Yeah. And she gets all those memories at once and remembers where her old home was and uh, jumps into her ship and fucking takes off again um spike and jet are just like all right well i guess we're not getting her help on this so let's just go for ed's dad and try to get that money so they show up where he is they didn't know it was Ed's dad i think they did at that point 
No, they found out. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. They find out that we knew it was Ed's dad because we saw the picture and we right. already seen the hologram. It's like, oh, wait, there's a bounty on Ed's dad? Of course there is. Of course there is. And so they go 50 after. 50 million. 50 million. So they go after looking for him. They find him. He's out in the middle of a crater. So they roll up on him and Spike is like, yo, what's good? What you you're doing? You're under arrest. Yeah. And he was pretty much like, wait, what are you doing? Because they're like, you have these instruments in the ground. He's like, oh, I'm measuring this. And they explain how they're trying to make the earth a better place pretty much uh by mapping it so that it can be you know something that they can use more uh, use again because the earth is a pretty much an unusable rock that is just being destroyed by asteroids every day at this point and they were like but these asteroids are changing the entire map every day they're like and we're out here fixing it every day like mapping all the news the terrain good yeah. dudes it's like oh okay uh Spike was like, well, you can get these hands. You come with me. <laughs> yeah. And that did not occur. Like, first of all, eggs were thrown. Yeah. Um, Dad threw eggs with deadly accuracy. Very deadly. Uh, knocked Jet down with the egg. Hit both their guns, but apparently made them useless. Jammed them up, I don't know up, how an egg will make Make them wet? Use. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Um, And then, like, they were like, all right, well, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Man, Ed's father was completely unbothered by by Spike's attempt to give him the hands. Like, just, yeah. It was like, it was, it felt like One Punch Man fighting Yamcha. He was just getting, <laughs> it, it looked like Ultra Instinct at points because he yeah. was just moving, just like his body was just moving when he was getting. Spike has taken some L's, bro. He's, no, he's had a, moments where he's had some dubs. This, had, this fight right here for me is the biggest L Spike has taken because normally Spike will get you back, leave a grenade, fall out the window, mm. shoot you once, get shot himself. In this fight, it was completely one-sided. One -sided. Yeah. He just took every hit, two different headbutts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like It's just like Spike, only thing you can give Spike is like he didn't stay down. Yeah, that's the only thing you can give him. Other than that, he take he took a hard L here. He did, and the only thing that saves him is really my favorite part of this episode. Um, Ed comes, uh, drives the bebop across the water with the controller, like a drone, mm -hmm. of course, right up to where her dad is, is on top of the ship, looks down, looks down and sees her dad and does a swan dive off the ship right into her dad's arms. Her dad grabs her and stops her descent after her body passes him behind her with by the ankles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she <laughs> stays straight plank as a board. Yeah. Do you understand how strong both of these individuals are to, to be able to do something like that? That's Ed, crazy. Is very, Ed is very unique. Bruh. Yeah. I'm just saying, just think about in real life how strong you have to be to jump probably, let's call it, what, 100 feet? I don't 100 think that's feet off the top possible. It's not, yeah. but either way, but like <laughs> we just saw what the dad was doing against Spike, yeah. so we know the dad is incredibly strong. But we also know that Ed has been doing some weird flexible baby oh, yeah. shit this whole series pretty Ed is, much. It's yeah. a liquid yeah. and a solid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Perfect. <true. laughs> Very true. Um, but jumped off, landed in dad's hands, and then they proceeded to do this like hug? Yeah, dance? like it's yeah. like their secret handshake. He's like whipping her around, around by the fucking it. ankles like, yeah. and spinning her, tossing her. And, and like, she was in it. She was, she was like, let's go. It was good to see you. It was amazing. Like yeah. for me, best reunion I've seen and anything I can remember, <laughs> straight up. Like, and, okay. and she introduced him, like, hey, this is my dad, dad, this is Spike, Spike and Jet. Spike and Jet, and then dad is like, oh, bam, headbutt to Spike. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, 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 they're, they're my friends, they've taken care of me. Oh, sorry, we're cool. Spike's on the ground laid out, drops a basket of eggs on his stomach. It was like, <laughs> thank you, peace. Here you go. Hey, Ed, you want to come back with me? <laughs> like, Ed was yeah. like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I do. But before they can, she can get her stuff together, another asteroid strikes, and they take off. And yeah. Jet, meanwhile, is looking not down at their bounty, and he's just like, this isn't 50 million, this is 50, and it's fucking fake. Like, Ed played us. Yep. Wait, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So I don't know if this happened in the... Uh in the um uh, in the in the in the sub, but in the dub, when Ed first comes by, he goes, "Oh um, hey, this is oh this is my son." Wait, hold on, I'm sorry, daughter, uh, yeah, daughter. Did, yeah. I forgot if you were my son, or my daughter. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Yeah, in the which is just, that's why I was like shitty anime dad. You don't even know this is your son <laughs> or your daughter. That is horrendous. He's not. Horrendous. He's like I said, eccentric like Ed. Uh, clearly, uh, yeah. I mean, not a good dad. Um, but uh, Faye, meanwhile, is um kind of on the path of memory goes to see her old home walks up to it and it's it's gone like there's nothing there just the the foundations of the home and she kind of draws out where her bedroom used to be and lays, lays down in it like fucking sad mm, yeah. like it's sad yeah um on the bebop ed is um kind of packing up her stuff getting ready to go gives spike a pinwheel um getting all her stuff together um jet's making a lot of hard-boiled eggs that they're just gonna start pounding at the end of this fucking Man, episode. they eat so many eggs so many eggs 
Um, and uh, Ed uh, takes off and, and is leaving and Ayn follows behind and uh, catches up to Ed. And Ed at first is just like, I, I'm not go- I'm not coming back mm-hmm. like you, you you should stay. And um, Ayn doesn't is not interested in that and wants to come along with Ed. And uh, Ed I says, mean, Ed and Ayn were like, you they know, were husband. nobody else. Peanut cared about that jelly. dog, bro. No. No. Nobody else gave a damn. That about dog, dog knew the best place for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna yeah. feed me, possibly. Yeah. yeah, right. Like that dog would have been on the menu, knowing these At guys point, yeah. before yeah, yeah. too long. Mm-hmm. Like these guys, uh, they, they they play with guns too much. I'm a, I'm gonna go where the family is. Yeah, and, and the child that doesn't hurt me. Right. So they take Very off. Um, Jet comes out to let everybody know that dinner is ready. Comes out to an empty, empty, uh, you know, common area, and finds Spike. And Spike's just like, well, the kid's gone. Both the women are gone again, uh, but down on the deck they have uh, Ed is painted out bye bye with her signature smiley face, and mm-hmm. uh, and so the two of them uh, now just sit down and just start housing some fucking eggs, and uh, the episode ends with another change uh, instead of saying see you later space cowboy it says see you cowgirl someday somewhere, somewhere. yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we're on to the final episode. It's two episodes, right? Two parter, two parter. Yeah. Now Rob. Yes. How officially do you think you can do this? I challenge. have no idea. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Because <laughs> there's lot a lot Cam, Cam just said it's one oh nine right now. We're at an yeah. hour. Hour oh nine. We're at an hour oh nine. We're doing good. I mean, yeah. we're I'd say okay. we're doing really good. Yeah. Because yeah. right now we're already at how many episodes we normally would have done. Plus. Well, now we're doing the plus because normally four episodes. Oh, yeah, we just right. did normally four episodes. Now we're about to do the last two. We'll be on the episode three. Any episode three right now? Huh. Oh my! So you know what? This this why camera. That's why camera's not on a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is what happens when you stay on task. We get fans by our our tangents, fam. Yeah, they love our the tangents. Side are funny. Tangents. Our Power Ranger tangent today is fantastic. Yes, that's gonna get us. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many more subscribers. Give us yes. at least two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this episode starts out. Uh, this I, th- this whole last two episodes. I mean, we ta- spent talking about Mars. I mean, it, this is on Mars. This is this is a where place. This is where stuff happens. Vicious. Uh, so Julia, actually, we we start the episode with her, Vicious. and she's getting uh, the notice, the the call that something's about to go down with the Red Dragon Syndicate, and that she may be in danger. Vicious. And that brings us to Vicious. Yes. He's coming into the apartment building with his crew of dudes all basically armed to the teeth with their machine guns. Uh, They kick in the door where they think the leadership of the Red Dragon Syndicate are sleeping, and they open fire. Yep. Um, And Vicious strolls in, crow on the shoulder, flicks on the lights, but turns out this whole thing was a setup. This was a trap. They got the leadership and all their dudes all around the top of this room looking down on him just like, dude, we knew you were coming. Yeah. Fortune teller told us that somebody would be, the Viper would be coming tonight uh, to uh, on this the night to, to take care of us. And they take him prisoner. And this is just like, you may as well just kill me now. Yeah. And they're saying, no, you need to learn humility. You don't get to decide your fate pretty much. I think die. they should have said that to themselves. They should have. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> I am, right now I'm telling them like, even without having seen the rest of the episode, like, no, kill him now. Yeah. If no, you, I, yeah, I, I was 100% like, no, you need, to, if you can kill Vicious, if you have an opportunity to do that, that needs to happen immediately. Yeah. Because Vicious is terrifying. He's he's absolutely terrifying. And as they're taking him out, he just turns around and gives him, by the way, a serpent's bite but, kills slowly. Here's here's my thing, too. The crow flew off his shoulder. The first thing I would have did is shot that fucking crow. Yo, didn't I say that? You did. No, I said that during the Why would episode. you let the bird live? I, the bird died. I want you to see it, too. We shot your bird. Yeah, your bitch-ass bird is Learn dead. Learn this humbleness. <laughs> How you like that? You, 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 you're next. Yep. They but, let the bird survive. I, already, I was like, this is going to come back and bite them in the ass. I already, I already knew it. Oh, my God. So, meanwhile, uh, Spike and Jet are at a bar, kind of drowning their sorrows, like, talking about, man, we got all these plans on Mars. We fucking missed the boat on that because of that side trip to Earth. These And then these women leave us behind. So, like, what the fuck? Like, you know, we had this shit together when it was just the two of us, man. Yeah. Like, And then they both clock something as a bunch of shadows start running by the windows. And, again, just a hail of bullets come through. And the fucking poor bartender just takes it, bro. Ugh, lit up. Up and <laughs> fucking Spike jumps over the bar, takes what he's mixing, drinks it, and it's just like too much vermouth. Like he's d- just died. Yo, no care for this dude, man. None. Si- these little these little uh disposable characters get no love. No None. like oh man, he should have did it's like, eh, yeah, well. <laughs> it's tough out there, man. Disrespect. It's tough out Hard there. Hard out in these streets. So they're they're 
taking cover and firing back, and they're under a lot of fire. Jet manages to uh, join Spike behind the bar, and uh, he gets shot in the leg, and Spike clocks the guy that did it, takes him out, and right behind him is another dude that they recognize. Well, at least uh, Spike does. He like, thinks it's Lynn, his Lynn. brother. Yeah, what up, Lynn? He's like, but, nah, I'm Jim, fam. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's right, Jin or Shin, your brother. Yeah, Shin. Yeah, right, yeah. your brother. Uh, and he tells him, uh, he tells Spike, uh, you know, hey, like vicious, he made us play at the at a coup tonight. He t- tried to take out the old guard, and it didn't go down. So now they're coming down hard on everybody that ever left the syndicate because they don't want any more of these people coming back around. Mm-hmm. And he's like, if you want to, like, if you, they're coming for you. So like, you better get the fuck out of here. Uh, so uh, Spike and Jet uh, manage to limp out of there while Jin is or Shin is is shooting behind him. Spike tells him like, "Hey, like you side with us, like you're you're out at this point. You're, mm-hmm. Like you're you're an enemy of them. There's two. So, um, but after that, we get a quick scene with uh, Faye at the airport, uh, kind of just watching the planes come in. And uh, there's a short little scene that I'll only touch on briefly. This old woman kind of muttering to herself. She doesn't want to be a burden to anybody. She doesn't want oh, to. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She's just like, I don't want to be in people's way. Like, I'm not going to go with whoever comes to pick me up. And sure enough, her son comes to pick her up. And like, he's talking to her. He's like, no, mom, like, come live with me. Like, I want you to I be with take me. care of you. And she's like, did you find a new job yet? And he's like, no, no. like, I don't have a new job he's yet. Like, what she's about like, your partner? What about your what about your co-host? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, she married your agent. agent. And it's the fucking. It's the guy from the show. Yeah. Did you know that when it was happening? <laughs> no, because uh, I didn't know that when it was happening because he had a different voice. Didn't he, he did. A, he had a completely different yeah. voice, which I thought was super interesting because she like, had a whole different voice too. Remember, she broke character and had a whole different voice. That's true. Yeah, yeah. they both so, had a character they were playing. Ah. Yeah. But he takes her in, and I think Faye at that point is kind of just like, ah, you know, that sense of belonging. That's like, I even think she said to Edward in the the episode before this, like, belonging is the most important thing you can have, Mm -hmm. the most important thing you can feel. And she doesn't have that right now. She doesn't feel like she belongs anywhere. Um, And she's even going to her ship, and Spike calls her up and is just like, you know, where the fuck are you? Like, get back here. You know, Jet shot up. Like, you know, we need help. And she's just like, like, how are you calling me like this? You know, give me a hard time. Like, you got people. Like, you don't need me. Kind of hangs up on him. And she's, she, because she doesn't know that Edward and Ayn are gone at this point. Right. But while she's sitting there, she sees a fucking red, uh, you know, a convertible drive by getting chased by a black car full of dudes armed to the teeth shooting at her. And Faye, for whatever reason, can't resist getting involved, steps Bruh, into the street. This shot shoots out the tire of that car. One shot, one bullet, front passenger side tire, flips car, everybody dead. Oof. She could have just shot him in the head instead. Take him out to misery. These I'm just are- saying, like, do you understand how precise that shot is? She was a beast. This whole scene, she was a beast. Yeah. She was. So yeah. then they start taking off. She turns around and does the sexy pose shot mm-hmm. and does the exact same thing to another car out, out of a back of car while out of the back of a car while flying while driving. Mm. Like, get out of here, bruh. Yeah. Like, she's nah. a beast. It is she, absolute beast. And she kind of pulls over, uh, you know, once the heat's died down and 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 they introduce themselves. And, uh, you know, Julie and Faye at first is just like, oh, you do want to like join up with me? Like, I don't have a crew right now. Yeah. I'm a bounty hunter. That's what what made me such a good Julie, shot. Julie was like, oh, bounty hunter, huh? Mm-hmm. Interesting. And then like pretty well, go ahead. I'm sorry, well, no, saying. that's I mean, that, so they get back in the car. She's like, oh, I'm not. She's like, I'm looking for a bounty hunter. I'm not trying to be a bounty hunter. Kind of asked her, do you know where bounty hunters might hang out? And. She's like, yeah, I could help you put in a bounty or something. Just like drive me back to my ship. And so she's driving her back and uh, Faye tells her her name. And that's when Julia introduces herself. And she's like, oh, Julia. And like some wheels start to turn. Mm -hmm. And as she drops her off, she's just like, by the way, tell Spike uh, to meet me. And I'll be where uh, we'll meet where we agree to meet. He'll know what it means. Mm -hmm. Um, And Faye is immediately like, wait, how do you even know that I know Spike? But Julia is gone at that point. Um. And there's some flashbacks here as well, uh, spliced in with uh, Jet and Spike getting at the another anime theme, uh, the the back alley doctor. They of they course. find another back alley doctor. You Jet's getting the, getting the bullet taken out of his leg. And isn't uh, he the same guy from the earlier episodes? He is. It's the yeah. same guy that had given that other dude the plastic surgery yep, from like yep. episode two. Yeah. Um, and uh, the two of them are just kind of like, all right, so like, what are we gonna do? Like, the Red Dragon Syndicate's coming after us. We're coming after Spike. 
And uh, Jets just like, I thought you left them. Like, why do they even care about who you are at this point? And it's like, that's not how it works, fam. It's just not. You're, you're in. You're out, you're in for life. And we're going to come for you. We're going to come for you, too. You and you all your people are dead. any of these these movies? Come on, man. Oh, y'all should know this. I mean, he's a cop. He How does he not know this? Come on, bro. I mean, or an ex-cop. Like, he knows how these syndicates blood work. Blood in, blood out. Yeah, so. We do see some some flashbacks at this point where we kind of get a little bit more of the Spike Vicious Julia story where it sounds like maybe Julia and Vicious had a thing and then Spike got involved and it's like, hey, girl, like, leave the syndicate with me. We can I'm, I'm going to do this one last job and get out and we can run away. But Vicious is vicious. on that. He's he, vicious. He and knows like, what's going on. I'm either going to kill Spike. Or I'm gonna kill, or I'm gonna have you kill Spike. But if I kill Spike, I'm killing everybody or something. Yeah, like that. basically. I, I wasn't feeling that Spike took his girl. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Because because that that Julia was vicious as first, right? Like I that, think so. They were together first, right? I want to say I that properly, so but they were too. together first, right? Yeah. Bro, vicious vicious has the right to want to kill you. <laughs> they you. were good buddies, and he yo, saw that as a betrayal. That, that's the you take yo. You know this is my lady, man. Yeah. There's all these other women in the world, but she. That's what always happens. The homie always wants your girl. Yeah, watch your back. And Spike, they, Spike is now you a hoe, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> you a sucker for that. That's a sucker move. I loved you for twenty five like episodes. Twenty four. This it was. I feel like it was a lot more her choice than his. I don't feel like he necessarily went at her. But at the same time, I feel where you're coming from. Like, I didn't see that coming. Well, it I seems like, the, you know, because Spike was in, we've seen, got hurt somehow and woke up while she was singing yeah. to him. Mm-hmm. So it seems like there was, like, a nurse patient type. She's always been feeling him. My thing is, you should have never got with Vicious then. I mean, Vicious is a piece of shit. This is all after he fucking <laughs> framed that other dude back in the military. So Turned him into a, a, a hermaphrodite, everything like uh, that. That was a rough up, break. Man. That was yeah. a rough break. So... We kind of get that information download, um, and uh, back in the present. Uh, no, wait. I'm sorry. I already covered that. Uh, so uh, where we have? <laughs> give oh me wow! Some. Whoa! Yeah, no, I, this totally never happened up. before. I'm like, well, I'm right, so we had right the, so we had the flashback, mm-hmm. and where we are now is that Spike and um, so I mean, what the last thing before the flashback was that uh, Faye got dropped off of the ship. So now we're in the ship, and yeah, Spike, right. got, Spike comes back to the ship. Um and Faye no Spike's already at the ship. Faye comes back to the ship. She goes in the ship, looks at Jet, Jet and Jet's just like, "Yo, why you only show up when you want my your shit fixed?" Right. And he sh- she's like, "Nah, where's Spike? I need to talk to him." He's well, like, the, and there's also a, a moment between uh, Spike and Jet where Jet's just like, "Dude, let the past be the past." Like yep. that was his journey. That's what Jet had to go through. And Spike's mm-hmm. just like, "I can't let this girl go. Like she's if I know she's out there, she's my other half." Like. Yeah. I met this girl and she's the only person that made me feel whole. Right. So I, if she's still out there, I got to find her. And that's where they kind of split up. And you're right. That's when Faye shows up and it's just like, where's Jet? Walks or I'm sorry, right, where's, where's Spike? Spike? Walks right up to him. And this is probably the, this is, uh, this is the most emotional part of the of the whole show between the two of them, isn't it? No, that that comes in the next episode oh, because okay, she just okay. tells him like, "I got a message for you. If you got money, he's like, I don't have any money, Faye. Like, are you gonna fucking tell me the message or not?" Yeah. But while that goes on, they immediately come under attack. Yep. Because the there's a simultaneous yep. attack going on. The Red Dragon are again coming after everybody. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they're about to put uh, vicious to the sword. This is being intercut with uh, the all the the old guard coming in to tell like vicious, "Hey, we're about to put you to death." Yep. Uh, Jet's getting a phone call from one of his old cop contacts, just like, dude, you better get the fuck out of here because they're coming for your guy. And then, meanwhile, we can't stop them. They're too yeah. strong. They're, you got to just run. And he's got no chance to do that because immediately they come under attack yep. from a bunch of Red Syndicate uh, drones or fighters or whatever. There you go. I helped you get back there. Rob. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> here. So, uh, Jet, or, or I'm sorry, Spike scrambles the Jets. Uh, he and um, and Faye get into their particular, their different Scrapping. ships, and yep. they're trying to shoot him down. Faye can't fly very well because hers is all fucked up yep um and but. they're just trying to survive this fucking thing i don't even think Faye gets out there because she's telling jet like let me get out there and he's like i can't like your ship can't fly she's like well we're getting hit on the bebop because mm-hmm. the bebop's getting fucked up with missiles and bombs and stuff it starts going down she's like get me out there or otherwise we're gonna go down anyway at this point yeah but spike manages to shoot them all down get them get them off and and jet tells him like go do what you got to do get out of here Get your girl back and then like just settle this once and for all. And he takes off. And meanwhile, back with Vicious and the rest of them, they're about to start this whole execution. Like, you got any last words? You got any like last will and testament you want to give out? Nope, nope, nope. 
And just as they're about to do that, the crow calls and comes down and fucking explodes into a smoke bomb. And under the cover, all that, uh, Vicious's plants within their men just start gunning down all, all the, the other guys, all the other dudes. Yo. And fucking the craziest part to me was when Vicious came up to that one dude. He's like, you're going to cry tears of blood. And Yo, and slice him oh. right his, on his eyes. eyes. Oh, my God. Goodness, Ooh. man! I, I I cringe during vicious that. Vicious is not to be. Oh, He's he, been vicious. He, he has been. So he has literally been vicious this whole time. Vicious, and so so vicious. And with that, he turns to everybody. He's just like, "This is my fucking syndicate now. You all answer to me." Mm. And uh, I am not. I am the captain now. No. He, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but Spike, he goes to the meeting spot because Faye did have her one moment of softness. It's just like, you know, fuck the money. Like, here, this is the message. The, Julia told me to tell you, like, go to the meeting spot. She said you knew who that was. And he, of course, does. And he heads there and he meets up with Julia. It's in the rain. And he hands a rose and she pulls out, out a gun. gun. Yeah. Like, ah, so Spike. He's like, wait, this seems familiar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they the next episode picks right back up from there, and he's just like, so, like, what is this? And she explains, I was supposed to kill you, but I I can't. I, I like, and, and it's let's just get like, away from here. I let's love just you. run. Yeah. Let's just get out of here. And, run and to the sun. Of course, they're immediately attacked. Yeah. Well, they they he, Spike is like, yeah, let's just run. Let's me let's go check in with that girl Annie, who oh, also yeah, used to be yeah, part of the yeah. Red Dragon Syndicate. Oh man, I don't remember this. Part. I don't remember this part. They, so they like, go in to like check in part. on her, and he's just like, listen, people might have already been here. It turns out they were. They get in there, and Annie's already bleeding from her stomach. Yeah. Shot her in the stomach. Her Bad way to go. Come on, bro. Long, slow, painful way to go. And she's just like, you know, I'm glad you came back. I'm glad you're back with Julia. I'm gl- you know, this is all coming together, but, you know, you better run because they're coming for you. Uh, she was a G about it. She was. She was. Like, she I'm went dying. Can you give me help? Just please. So, <laughs> at this point, Julia takes off her jacket and covers uh, yeah. covers her, and then they're immediately attacked. Because they- Spike goes into the back and pulls out the gun, and she's like, you yeah. don't need that gun if we're running. And he's like, yeah. I'm not running. This is going to follow us. I got to stay. And she's yeah. like, then I'm staying too. Yes. And that's when the attack starts and shit just goes wild immediately. Oh, yeah. they, they start scrapping, 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 scrapping. Yeah. They've been on. They've been on. They haven't let let, let up yet. The Red Dragon. They no, they, they're not they some, they some hoes. Oh. No. No. There's Jesus. no hoe in the Red Dragon. Can we breathe? So they they come in fucking gunning, and they're trying to blast. Uh, Spike is trying to fight him off. You know, Julie's got her pistol. Spike's got his his shotgun. He's they're 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 getting some kills on the way. Spike mm-hmm. has some long, long distance shotgun shots that were pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, yeah, not <laughs> physically possible impressive. No, yeah, uh, but they managed to get up to the rooftop, and uh, as they're what, running, hold on, what, Cameron? No, I've shot shotguns before. That's what I'm saying. So he he was using a buckshot. So like when you see the way they were shot. Like their whole like si- in front of them would explode. So Cameron said that shotguns shoot further than they do in video games. Assuming I haven't shot a shotgun before, thank you, Cameron. So, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that like he's shooting people from a second story roof that are probably at least a hundred yards away from him, down to under behind a car running with surgical fucking with accuracy. surgical precision <laughs> with a buckshot shotgun. Brennan, do you realize he shot a little rock in black <laughs> the size space, of a fist. <laughs> the size of a fist? With a laser. Do you realize that <laughs> shit? This is what he does. Uh, he's been shooting people right between the eyes since look, like episode I'm just three. I'm out how impressive he is. The man's got That's one it. setting and it's fucking dead nuts accurate. Yeah. Good That's lord. Like, okay. He's not messing around. Moving on. So he's uh, so as they're gunning people down, he, he tells uh, Julia to get down, look out, and uh, says somebody's coming out, somebody they thought was down. Was not down. No. Comes back up, and as Julia's running across the rooftop, she catches a bullet to the back, and Damn. she falls as a bunch of doves just and start. She, it's a very up next to cinematic her. death. Yes, very. Um, nice. And yes. she dies in his arms. She whispers something that's inaudible. Mm-hmm. Can't hear it. And mm-hmm. Spike, uh, he he's feeling every piece of that. He's feeling every piece of it. What do you think she said? I mean, we find out later. No. I can so we'll I'll just tell you when oh, we get yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna sorry. say like really? sorry. You don't sorry. remember that part? <laughs> Obviously not. All right, moving on. I watched it on two times speed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the part we watched together. Not this part, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, come yeah, back yeah, later. Yeah, that's right, that's right. We watched it together. We're also having like, a conversation. An hour and thirty we're, minutes ago. We're having a conversation while we're watching that. Go ahead. So uh, back. <laughs> <laughs> ah well. So there be a few. There's a few things that we actually kind of missed as we were we were talking over this. And one of them is that Shin, the brother of Lin, mm-hmm. uh, manages to get back to the Red Dragon Syndicate and sees like, oh, I see the people I cast my lot in with did not come out. 
They uh, lost. They mm-hmm. lost. So Vicious is now in charge, and Vicious is immediately just like, did you get your target? Talking about Spike. He's like, uh, no, he got away. He's like, then why'd you come back? Where's Julia? And he's like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, if you want to survive, don't follow in your brother's footsteps and fucking walks out. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Bad meeting with the new boss. Yes. yes. Bad not a, meeting. Not the best first impression for the boss. No. Um, also, back on the Bebop, Faye and Jet are, d- are discussing what's going on as they're trying to fix up their ships. The Bebop is still down. And um, uh, Faye is even saying, like, you know, why Like, why did you send him out? Like, that, you know, he could, that, he could not come back. Like, this could be the end of him. And he's just like, you know, don't you think I fucking know that? Like, he's way too much trouble, like, keeping him around. Like, he, look at me. I'm, my leg's shot up. My ship's fucked up. Like, I, he, he's not worth it. But, like, clearly the two of them are fucking emotional, tearing themselves they up. Know, they yeah. know what's happening. They know that, you know, he has something that he just needs to do. And Spike even asks her, uh, or Jet even asks her, like, you know, what's Julia like? And she just, you know, kind of gives this... Very a really good description. Of yeah, her, she's yeah, like, oh, sure. she's normal, but like, she has this like otherworldly to herness to her, where she's like either this angel from hell or this demon from heaven, and like, I mean, I mean, it's a good way to describe somebody. But um, they're still out there looking for him, and Jet even goes to go see uh, the shaman that they've seen a few times throughout the show, and the guy is telling him like, hey, like. He get, he tells him a few things, but one of them is just like your 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 buddy is gonna die soon. We all have guardian stars, and you know they they come into life when we're born and they fade out when we die. Mm. And I see that your friend Spike's star is about to die out. Yeah. And he's and and Jet doesn't like this answer, and the guy tells him like, "Hey man, death is always with you, mm. but like if you approach it with fear, it's only gonna make it approach faster." Yeah. And just try to tell him, like, it just is what it is. Try to embrace it with open arms. I thought that was a dope line. It yeah. was. Yeah. It was. Um, so Vicious is hot on the trail of uh, Spike and Jet and his, or uh, Spike and Julia and finds the uh, the coat that they had uh, discarded. It's kind of just like, so should we go? His, his One of his henchmen are just like, should we go track Spike down? He's like, nah, he's they got go nothing left. He'll come to us. Yeah. He knows he knows Spike very well, um, and Spike does return to the to the Bebop um, to Jet's surprise. They're surprised to see him again, and he kind of gives everybody his last goodbyes and is just kind of saying. He even tells the story that definitely applies to him and Julie about this tiger striped cat that, you know, lived a million lives and always came back and finally retired from the from his life and then met this white cat that gave him meaning and then when that white cat passed away the the orange striped cat the tiger striped cat was like you know i can't do this and finally laid down and died and spike tells him like oh i like that story and just like or, or flip-flop just like i like that story spike tells him i always hated it which mm-hmm. is a reference to the episode before where uh jet had told jet him, the, him story. the story yeah, yeah. And and then this uh, Spike walks over. This is where he has a conversation with Faye. Where well, because Spike asks him as he's or Jet walks him as asks him as he's walking away. It's like, are you doing this for Julie? And he's like, Julie is dead. I'm, I can't do anything for a dead girl. Yeah. And like walks away. Um, and uh, that's when he runs into Faye, who immediately starts it out with putting a gun to his head. Yeah, because I mean, Faye is obviously into Spike. She's a very protective. She she got mad love for him, and she tries to protect him. She's like you don't have to do this you can stay like she's pretty much trying to convince him not to leave and it doesn't work and he gets in her face and he says look look at me look in my eyes one of them is fake that means that all the time right now in my life i am seeing in the past and the present and i don't know what's reality and he just goes on this philosophical like he just pretty much just breaks her down and she's like so hurt she's just like you've never told me anything about you before why would you do it now in the sense of like, you don't tell me emotional things before you go die, because now I actually like you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it goes back to what she had been even saying to Ed, where she had never felt like she belonged anywhere, and she's yeah. like, "I finally found out that this is where I'm gonna belong." Right. And if you go away and you die, then that's gone. Yeah. And I just finally got the taste of that. Yeah. And so he just turns pretty much and walks away. Yeah. And, and she, she says, she's... "Don't go there to die." Don't go to die. He's like, "And I'm not. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. I'm going to see if I can live." And she gets so frustrated because she knows words no longer can affect him. So she shoots her gun. She doesn't shoot it at him. She shoots it like in his direction. But she's obviously not aiming for him because obviously words won't convince him. Maybe she can show her resolve with a gunshot or two. And it didn't. He kept going. He got yeah, in the ship and he, and he headed towards uh, Crow yeah. Guy. Meanwhile, Jet's in the other room just like, let's fucking fix this up. Like, <laughs> yes. what the hell? I uh, love that he didn't budge either. That's, that means he was stone cold ready. He is, his... his 
his reflexes, he's like, all right, let's fucking go. Like yeah. she shot, he didn't he didn't flinch. She was just like, I'm ready. Well, he also to trusts. Get to work. He knows she ain't gonna shoot him. Yeah. So uh, Spike goes into his his last stand and is just like. I'm gonna. So he 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 comes into the building, drop kicks a grenade into a fucking lobby. It was so, so dope. dope. <laughs> yo, yo, he just literally. I've never seen somebody do that. He just drops it and then kicks it. Like literally drop kicks. Drop yeah. kick that. Never thing. seen that before. It was nuts. It runs up the escalator and is like fired off shots. Plants grenade or plants like C4 on the the escalator. Yo, he's yeah. lighting these dudes. Uh, oh yeah, he's a one man army at this point. He's yeah. a man on a fucking mission, and yeah. he's taking everybody out that stands in between him and Vicious. He blows up people that are following behind him, gets on the elevator, goes upstairs, and uh, ends up getting uh, caught with a bullet uh, when he comes out of the elevator. And he sees um, Jin, right? It's not. Yeah, Shin comes Shin, around and ends Shin. up helping him out. Mm, yeah, and the two of them, he's just like, "Listen, man, like it's bad. Like yeah. you gotta, <laughs> you gotta help me out here, man. Spike, yeah. you're gonna help me out." And he's like, "Yeah, dude, like let's go." So they go to approach Vicious, uh, approach Vicious, and uh, just as sh- uh, Shin shows him where uh, he can go, he gets lit up too, just like his brother. Yeah. Uh, turns out he filed right in his brother's footsteps. I'm sorry, but Vicious dog. called that. Oh my God, he did. Uh, and he's just like, you know, hey man, I always was waiting for you to come back and take over. Like I wish it had been you instead of Vicious. Yep. Um, and so Spikes gets to the top floor. And uh, there's this this huge explosion that brings the fucking throne room down around Vicious. And uh, he's just like, ah, Spike. Yeah, I've been waiting for you this whole time. Like, you know, like, let's do this, man. They throw hands. He tells him, I'm the only one that can kill you. And Spike tells him it's the same thing the other way. Like, Mm -hmm. the the two of them are just sort of, like, locked in this this battle of death. Edward's father would kill both of them. But please continue. Fair point. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I think Fair point. Throwing it out there. Um, so they, they go at each other, uh, and, uh, you know, Spike is shooting, uh, some bullets at him, can't seem to hit, gets, catches a fucking knife in his leg that Vicious throws at him, or in the shoulder. on the shoulder. He get, he, so it's, it, and and fucking Spike just charges up the stairs, is trying to get at him before he can take any more blows, and, uh, he manages to point his gun at Vicious, but Vicious kind of, like, points it the other way, he, Gets him in the face a little bit. They drop the sword, drop the gun, switch, where now Mm -hmm. Spike has the sword, Vicious has the gun, um, and they're like, we need to finish this now. Yeah, and they actually throw him back. Yeah, they throw him back to each other. Because he tells him Julia's dead. Yeah. And he's like, you guys got Julia. Like, she's gone. Let's let's just finish this. This is always between the three of us. Yeah. And yeah, they throw each other their weapons back. And Spike is deadly accurate with that gun once again. Puts one right through the middle of Vicious's chest. Vicious, meanwhile, always deadly with a sword as well. Yeah. Slashes him right down the stomach. And uh, Vicious is the first to fall. And he goes down and uh, Spike, Spike is still standing and is walking down the steps. All of the, the people that were Vicious's men are kind of staring at him, not really sure, not really knowing what to do. And Spike points is, uh, this is where we see what uh, Julia had said to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Julie, uh, uh, as she's dying, just says, um, just says it was all a dream, and Spike is just like, "Yep, it was just a bad dream." We were like, it used to, that's exactly yeah. what. I, yep, <laughs> yep. Now you remember because I said that. Yep. <laughs> now you remember. Um, so Spike uh, is limping down the stairs, and you know, points the finger gun at the syndicate guys, and says, "Bang!" Bang. Just like he did in a couple of other episodes, and then falls down. And the credits start to roll, but there's, I think, what. It's important narratively, just uh, a last moment after the credits are done. They, As the, the camera's been kind of panning up this whole time, they finally go get to the starlit sky. There's all these different stars, and one of them blinks out. Yeah. And instead of saying, uh, see you later, Space Cowboy, the words we're left with are, you're going to carry that weight. And that is the end of Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop. Bebop. Yo, first of all, I don't ever want to hear anybody say, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, because you can still win. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you call this just a winner. It's a tie. I mean, exactly. Well, he had yeah. a sword, not a knife. He had a sword and a knife. Yeah, I think you won if you beat the if you can kill the guy with the gun. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and and Spike too killed that uh, Perrier Lafou guy or whatever his name was uh, with throwing that knife into his leg. Yeah. That dude was fucking bulletproof. Good yeah. point. It, yeah, and that ended up being that his downfall. If you're an anime, <laughs> the, the real lesson here is bring swords, knives, and guns as well as grenades that you can kick. If Just you be, do well it, yeah. Yeah, be well prepared. Yeah, be well prepared. A little bit of everything. Yeah. So. so yeah, we Are finished we up it? finally. Yeah. Episodes one through twenty six, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, we should, we should, we get, we let Rob right. last since. It's, okay, yeah, so true. um, Cameron, can you help me out here? So I want to, we're gonna give the two ratings, right? The ratings for these four episodes, as well as the ratings for the whole series, right? Cam, what was my rating for the last time that we did this? I said that slower so I could help you get there on time. He's looking. 
He's close. Just stalling. For yeah, I'm just trying to stall. Time. I, is a bitch. Drying it out. No, just the, the most recent one. A little longer. 66? 66? All right, I'm going to go with 7,000 for the last mm. four episodes. Mm. Six. And I'm going to go with... Six episodes. Last six episodes, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go with 7,000 for the last six episodes. And as a whole, um, I still take my rating in what I said before and how this show was not intended to be watched as a binge show. Mm. It was intended to be watched as one-off episodes, which I think makes it better if you look if you view it from that perspective. I'm going to give it overall a 6,800 and say that I feel pretty strong about that because I enjoyed the vast majority of these episodes. I'd say 70, 75% of them were good episodes that I was like, that was dope. And the ones that I that that other twenty, I say twenty twenty five percent, I guess that's twenty five thirty twenty five thirty percent. Um, that was math for you, by the way, Keenan. Uh, <laughs> uh, that other twenty five thirty percent wasn't horrible. Me, uh, it just wasn't. It was stylistically not my taste. But I feel like the whole show was directed really well. I think the the sound design was top notch. I think the the character design, the world building, the animation was top level. Um, I think the storyline was not good, but that's because of how the show was designed to be. And I'll say that would be subpar because um, if you really, really wanted to understand the show, you could really watch like there's like six episodes and that's the whole show pretty much. You watch all the two eight parts. episodes. You watch the two episodes that bring in Faye and the dog. You watch the, the two episode part with uh, uh, what's his name? Lucius. I mean, whatever it is. Vicious. Vicious. And the last two are Vicious. Lucious. And I think like one or two other ones in there. Lucius is yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I, I got there. But either way. <laughs> Lucius I'm Malfoy saying or something. He did have that like <laughs> Malfoy. He kind of had that. Sort of energy. <laughs> so in all the, I say like there's like if you, you could pull 10 episodes out of this show and say like you understand the entire show if you watch these 10 episodes. Uh, when it comes to the story, which means to me it's not that great of a storyline. Um, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. 6,800. Can't give you the funniest face. Like, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, me, um, I'm torn with this show. Wait, wait. Can we? Hold Are on a second. Finished? Cam, do you have a rating for this? Out of nine? Huh? Out of 9,000. Out of 9,000. 9, 9, Cam says 9,500. So just so you guys know, I said it earlier. Cam watched the whole thing. Like, we started watching, watching this, and Cam just binged the whole thing. I think this is the first one Cam watched all the way through, too. Yeah. Do you like our? Uh, did you like our review, Cam? That was good? Okay, cool. All right, what you got, Keenan? Yeah, like I said, I'm torn because I feel like this show is, um, like, maybe maybe because how I watch, how I like anime, I need a main antagonist, and it bothered me through the majority of this episode. We didn't really have one. Yep. I think if we would have had Vicious from at least episode three to five from on, like, he was, like, in there, he was the one planning shit, he was the one stopping it from getting stuff, I would have been like, yes, I need that. But we didn't have that, so... The build up with even Vicious at the end was was good, but it could have been better if he was there for like pretty much the whole thing of it. Um I'm cool with the standalone stuff. It was it was it was fine. I feel like there was episodes. I feel like it's like Samurai Champloo in a sense, where they're same director. Were, yeah, and same same director. It's 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 that same thing where it's just like it's not you could have took out a, a bulk of those episodes and this would have been dope. I feel like when you know you only have a season, don't waste my time. You feel, like you, waste, you feel like your time was wasted with I it? feel like my time was wasted in the sense of a story. Mm. Because okay. like the story wasn't that strong. And I feel like you, you just get to the story then. Like since, there's, since it's all standalone, I understand you made that point. It wasn't inten- intended for that. Yeah. Um, they made it for the audience that they knew that was going to get. But then I love the elements of the deepness of it. That shit was beautiful. Yeah. Like whether it's the, the episode about spirituality, religion, whatever you want to say. Like it had a lot of those elements different, just thrown in there. And I was just like, damn. Like it's like... I didn't like Trigon a lot, but Trigon had a lot of philosophical stuff in there, mm-hmm. and I feel like this show did that too. So it, it gave it, it made it, my rating is kind of weird in this. Where these last, I guess, what was my last one, uh, Cam? About sixty eight hundred. I was gonna be with Brendan around seven thousand seventy one hundred for these last six, um, and but I would give her overall. Fuck, it's hard because of that. I would say my overall, I would give an overall, it's gonna probably boost up to like a sixty eight hundred. I know I gave some low scores in there. Dang, we just aligned. I just six, That's the exact rating. I, those are the exact ratings I just gave. Well, yeah, my uh, seven thousand seventy one hundred, whatever, um, in between there. Um, seventy fifty. Seventy fifty. Seventy fifty. So it's not. So it's not burning. Seventy fifty. Um, <laughs> so it's but, not burning. But but really, honestly, what saved this was a lot of that, like this, the, the philosophical, the deepness. I was like, shit. If I watched this at sixteen, I wouldn't have got a lot of this shit. And then I, now that I'm watching this, I'm like, this is not made for teenagers no. i don't think it is no. at all i think it's made for maybe people in their mid-20s probably going through some shit like 25 and being like yo 
my life is kind of in a weird direction. And they watch the show, they be like, damn, this shit is like, you know. Yeah. So there, that's my rating for it. Cool. Um, Robikins. I, I agree with some of what you said, Keenan. Um, there are definitely episodes that I think we could have lost, but when this show is on, it's fucking on. Mm-hmm. And the, there are so many levels and deepness to it. And even just like the appreciation I got for some of these episodes um, only increased when we got in here and talked about them. True. Um, and there were definitely episodes I could have done without. I'm not really into the, the, the Toys in the Attic episode where they had to deal with the monster lobster sandwich from outer space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even some of the stuff that was a little bit more Ed centric wasn't necessarily my favorite. Um, but the stuff with Faye, Spike, and Jet, I I really really enjoyed because I know you're saying there's not really a central antagonist, and I say that's true. In, that's true in a fashion in that like obviously Spike's antagonist is vicious, right. but for especially Faye and Jet their antagonists are themselves in their past. And mm-hmm. that's exactly what the show's about. Um, even in that, the last words, actually what really struck me um, and what really made this last episode feel so heavy to me is those last words, you're going to carry that weight, is um, a reference to the Beatles. They wrote the song, Carry That Weight, mm. which was a reference to their breaking up. It was on their last album. And they, the line is, boy, you're going to carry that weight a long time. And it's a reference not only to the weight that we all carry mm. of our pasts, but also the fact that they carried the weight for you because uh, you as a fan went to them to carry your weight and yeah. like make you feel better. Ah, yeah. And now they're saying, like, we're giving that weight back to you. You mm. now have to take these lessons that we give you and carry that weight and take them. And whether it's letting go of the things in the past that you've been hanging on to for a long time, like Jet, or you need if you are been running away from something like Spike, or if you're waiting for somebody to tell you who you are, like Faye, that's not going to happen. You have mm. to deal with those ooh, things. Ooh, ooh, and amen. I just, amen. That, I thought that was Preacher super rock. Deep and really beautiful. Um, <sighs> That's why the the depth of the show is this shit is layered, man. It's there's just a lot to it, and on an individual episode levels, I'm I think hugging you, can you really... after this. All right, <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> but like you know, and that's after you take the, there. Are, so while there are silly episodes that I think you can take out, I think there are far less of them than there were in Samurai Champloo. I to me, I think this is a, a better show. Um, this four stretch and and even. What finishing that last episode made me want to watch the the first episode again because if you think about what those first ep- that first episode with them chasing down that guy and that girl that were on the run they had left the syndicate they had stolen the drugs they were Yo. gone Spike is literally seeing what his life could have been if right. he and Julia had been able to run away together and so when Good he watches God. them go down in a hail of gunfire he should have gone first he's like oh <laughs> shit like that you know so. That there's a there's a lot to that. So um, this last stretch of episodes, I'm gonna match my rating from the first stretch, uh, which was a 7200, and I'm gonna mm. give the overall. Um, I'm gonna give the overall mm, seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yeah, that's you, a steady steady rating. Well, go ahead. You you said he should have went first. Who would have followed that? <laughs> I would have. No, but the thing is, because no, the, no, but the thing is, we not all talk that to, deep. No, 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 I wouldn't have gone that deep. But I like I would have taken that into consideration more with my rating because he just taught me some stuff about the show. Is my point. Yeah, and he and he did. I mean, we can speak about that now real quick. But like that's like this is like in this particular show, I feel like he was the headliner. Oh yeah, and we're, yeah, the, oh, we're no, the openers yeah, this is, with the, no, no, with what we're is, saying because that's that's the truth. I, like I I knew it was deep. But I didn't go as deep as with Rob. Yeah, it's just, Rob. I mean, so it's Rob. And saying that, and I understand, and this is why I think, and maybe this is why Ice might find it trash. Oh no! You know, I don't know. But, but it's I like, mean, even I don't know if you guys listened to last week's episode, but Ice and I did talk about it a little bit. And I mean, his rating is like a five thousand, and he's like, it's not a bad show. Mm. He just it doesn't get the draw, which I'm like, it's not for some people. I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and but I feel it's like deep I, how you can be so shallow. But my <laughs> stupid. My thing is, even <laughs> if I miss something that's deep, and you explain it, it'll make me now. It'll replay those episodes at least, like rewind real quick in my head and be like, "Oh shit, okay, I get it now. I I like it a lot more than we I I previously might have stated. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you can if you can, especially if you drop that to me, because sometimes I might be like, man, I might be watching it too quick. I'm doing three things at once. I'm not picking up shit at the same time, and I feel like 
Rob definitely watched these episodes and was like he was able to grasp it probably even maybe either better because we might have been multitasking or I don't know. And I guess put put stuff in more perspective because I think there was a few episodes where you said something and I was like, oh, and now we like that episode. Yeah, because even when I, that like Jupiter jazz two parter, I was like kind of yeah. whatever about it. But then when you explained Vicious's plot yeah. to like trick his old army buddy into taking the fall for him, I'm like, fuck, that's diabolical. I didn't Di- put yeah. that together at all. Yeah. Now it's funny because for me, I was watching. I was like, "Yo, this episode's amazing! Holy crap!" Yeah. And y'all are like, "What are you talking about?" And I was just like, the, "But I think that's what makes that sh- that's what makes it amazing is when you pick up stuff like that." And yeah. then when you say that, I was like, "Oh, ah, I would argue oh. that this show, as Rob was saying, is I, I would argue that this show actually would probably be better a year from now. Like watching it the second time through, mm-hmm. like just giving it some space and then watching it again. Mm-hmm. I think because you now know all those things, you're not worried about trying to pick up on the plot." And you're watching for the details and the subtle subtleties, like the the rabbit in the hair delivery thing, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. And if you watch this again for the subtleties, I feel like as I was watching this show, I was saying it earlier to Rob and Cameron, is that every oh, there's so many frames in the show that I could easily just take that screenshot in a high res- resolution and turn it into a yeah. a, po- a poster or, or like a uh, like a background for my computer because it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And if they're taking that much time for those frames, you got to think about how much time they're taking for the little tiny elements in those frames that yeah. we can't notice the first time you see it. This is one of those shows I think the more times you watch it the more it means to you. Well, mm-hmm. definitely somebody said watch the animated movie and um and then somebody said, "Watch, you know, when the live action comes out." I don't know about bleep? that. I, I I have a hard time with live action anime. Yeah. The I best did, one I I've ever seen still is uh, Death Note, and it still doesn't even get close to the uh, the anime. Hmm. Well, because they messed it up and made it into a movie instead of a show. Yeah, I mean, I've heard the animated movie for Cowboy Bebop is pretty good. Cameron and I were talking a little bit about the live action adaptation, and I'm like cautiously optimistic I'm not. I mean, if only because it sounds like there it's not going to be a one for one adaptation. Because uh, they're like, we're not going to tell the same thing that you've already seen, if only because you've already seen it. Mm. Um, and it sounds like they're taking their time with it. Um, but I, I'm you know, it, it's it's always going to be a risk. I want to. You, see you hear though. live action adaptation. Uh, you yeah. start. Did you you cringe. Attack on Titan yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's Attack tough. on Titan was rough. Uh, did, did you see uh, Full Metal Alchemist? Rough. Yeah. Did you see yeah. Dragon Ball Z? Rough. rough. I'm oh, just saying. Show me. Dragon Ball Z is not a movie, man. What? <laughs> it's not a movie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the drag of a movie. Cameron saying it's more grounded and you can do it if you do it right. That's what I think. I, I, and honestly, with it, Cowboy so Bebop, I think job. it is a movie that you can. It's probably easier to make than all the other ones because they're flying in spaceships. Well, spaceships is flying. Spaceships have been done how many know, times? Star Wars, now? right? I get it. Yeah, yeah. All right, whatever. There's no superpowers in that sense where they got to make stuff look super CGI and stuff like that. That's what I yeah. Besides the space and flying, I want to see the movie. I think we I should do watch too. the movie. I want to see it. Yeah, we so, could do that as a one off or something. You guys want to do Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, cool. I'm in to do that. And we're going to try to watch also the new My Hero movie coming out soon. Woo! Yeah. So, uh, so that's what I'm excited about right now. So we're going to try to cast that probably probably during that weekend. Um, we'll try see. to if we're, we're not too busy. We might not do it all together, but we'll review it as soon as we can. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so make sure y'all watch that new My Hero movie that's coming out, about, I think, about a week and a half or two. Um, I so think uh, next up is Brendan's pick. Yeah, it is. Ooh. Brennan, you're up. Oh, wow. Brennan's I haven't even thought about this. Okay. Throw me, your, throw me your Rex, y'all. Mr. Producer Face, where you can find me on the gram. Yeah, hit him up on, on there. Give him some. So you don't have anything in mind. You want them to give you a recommendation. That, that I mean, want. they can say whatever they want. Doesn't mean I'm going to pick it. <laughs> It'll be put into consideration. Yeah, it goes <laughs> into con- con- consideration. We know how they are fans with y'all picks out here with these croco no basket ass. <laughs> yeah, if you're on our YouTube right now, he just stared into your soul. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, uh, go ahead, Rob. Drop your stuff. Yeah, RV Gangsta. Danger on Instagram. Uh, I know Ice at Ice Tom McGowan. Ice Tom McGowan. At Mr. Producer Face on the ground. I'm Keenan Baker on everything. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, man. And let us know how y'all love Cowboy Bebop. If y'all watched it with us again, and let us know how it was. I don't want to hear your opinions when you were 13, bro. I want to hear. <laughs> I actually, what I really want is if you guys have. Any parts of the story or s- details that we missed, I want to know. Absolutely. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Actually, Please. Drop, it, drop it in the comment section. If you're in the group chat, drop it in there. Um, but, yeah, e- either or. We, w- we want to know because, I mean, we Rob, I think, got some deep stuff. So did Brennan. Um, if we, we, well, I'm sure we missed some stuff also. And we'll also Easily, let you guys yeah. know what Ice's rating is for the last four episodes and for the, uh, the, f- the full show. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see you all next week. And thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Animation. And so anime was solved forever.